We are absolutely psyched to say that this episode of the Empty Netters podcast is brought to you by our old friends at Labatt Blue Light. We're in the middle of hockey season. We're in December. It is the perfect time to crack open an ice cold beer, and there is no better beer on the planet than LBLs. They are the crispest, coldest, most refreshing Canadian pilsners you have ever had, and every single glass of Labatt Blue Light has a nice taste of Canadian kindness in it. It's unbelievable. So if you're sitting at home watching a hockey game, at the game, sitting in the stands, or you just need to rip open a cold one, Labatt Blue Light has you covered in every sense because it is the best beer in the game today. So jump on board and crack open a Labatt Blue Light with your boys and enjoy this episode. All righty, the ice is ready and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. It's December. It's Christmas season. I'm wearing sweaters. You are. I almost wore two, but I thought I might wait because maybe I was going to wear it at a different time. But yep. then now I'm kind of like, I just should have worn one for every episode in December. It's my whole mindset on the Christmas season. There's not enough of it. Not enough. That's why I start November 1st. Yeah. Oh, dude. When You start wearing sweaters on December 1st, you have less than a month to wear those sweaters. The, you got to wear them longer than that. The candy gets put away. The Halloween costumes go back into the bag. Yep. And then it's Christmas everything. Oh, yeah. The music, the movies, the sweaters. Oh, We're yeah. doing it all. I agree. We're doing it all, dude. Yeah, we drove the yard house and you were playing Christmas music. Yeah. Sure. But you liked you it. You liked it. Yeah. Just Happy saying. birthday, brother. Happy birthday, Brian. Thank you, guys. December 1st birthday, Brian. Yep. Christmas. Christmas first, boy. First day of the last month, the last year of the millennium in 1999. <laughs> I was like, well, one time. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, though. That is pretty sweet. <laughs> my buddy, my really... Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, my God. Watching uh, the Kraken game right now. The Kraken are trying to get their spunk back. I got yeah. I got. Uh, we actually have a lot of buddies born on this day, but one of my really good buddies, Johnny O, he is born on September 9th, and in 1999, it was nine nine ninety nine. That was going to be his birthday, and we. I was in a gym class with him then, and the teacher was going around just getting everyone's birthdays, like actual birthdays, you know. So like you'd say the year you were born. So like the class is going around saying it, and Johnny just like brain fart whatever just got too fired up about how cool his birthday was that year that they were teacher was like o'sullivan and he was like nine nine ninety nine and he was like you were born this year you fucking idiot <laughs> in front of the whole class and i was like ah damn dude <laughs> <laughs> was, he was never the same dude. yeah he never, he never recovered from that honestly yeah. i don't think he ever recovered from that's that. a young age to fuck yeah. up badly like that yeah. too that's really tough very tough Ah, uh, well, listen, we've got a great episode for you today. We're going to get into the No Bucky warm up, but exciting stuff. Like we said, it's Christmas season. We've got Seth Jarvis of the Carolina Hurricanes joining the pod today. Dude, one of the funniest guys in the league. Oh, he is uh, he is the man. Like I, He is a ball of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Jarvis in Vegas, and uh, after we did the, the media tour shenanigans, I was like, dude, I you have to come on the podcast yeah. immediately. And he was down, dude. He's just such a fun, young whippersnapper. Yep. Stud. Yeah, absolute stud. Having an unreal year. So we'll get into that soon. But before, let's hit it with the No Bucky warm-up. I want to talk about a big point of conversation last episode was the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Buzzing. 3-0 and mm-hmm. since Hines has been brought in as the new coach. New, the new coach, coach bump. bump. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think, I still don't think it'll hold. Well, actually, here's the thing. I think they're better than they've been, uh-huh. been playing. So it should have been... They should have just been doing this anyway. And, you know, maybe it is. I haven't heard, and I, I easily could have missed this, but right when Woodcroft went out, oh, yeah. I got to look that up. That'll be a funny thing. But right when Woodcroft went out, we saw um, uh, Connor come right out and say he didn't lose the room. It, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't him. And I haven't I haven't heard anything from the wild camp at all. I don't know if you've seen anything that Nor was like. I. So maybe maybe he did. Maybe maybe Ibsen did lose the room and, and this was needed change. But uh, either way, I'm glad to see them playing their potential a bit, whatever the cause, whatever the cause that snapped him out of it. Is. Sure. Uh, we released a clip today on Monday talking, you know, that was from last mm-hmm. week's episode. We're talking about flurry and Gus, both under 900 save percentage, both over three goals. Like they're, they are not brutal. Playing well, but these last three games only given up one goal. They have a three, one win, a six, one win and a four, one win. That's great stuff. That's Shut wonderful. the door way better. Marco Rossi. Yeah. In the Calder conversation, he's unbelievable. He's got two goals, one assist, and three points in those three games. He's got eight goals, six assists, 14 points in 22 games on the year. 
things looking pretty good. I, I, I said in our AMA yesterday, I'm not ready to say the wild return of things are, you need a yeah, 10 yeah. game sample size. So six and four after 10 games. And I'm maybe like, shit, okay, maybe this new coach change, this new voice in the locker room really did change things up, make them start playing a different way. And yeah, maybe things are, are, are turned around a little bit, but it's too early to call it. Yeah. And I but, might even need more than that before personally, before I no, call it. I, 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 oh, sorry. Agree with you. I don't mean call it, call it. I mean, at least voice an opinion. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll entertain games, those questions. If you're yeah. six and four or better after 10 games, then I'm like, good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's easily your best 10 stretch of the season. So good job. But I agree. Not ready to call it yet. Um, one thing I do want to mention that we didn't really mention last week is the wild. We talked about great team constantly in the playoffs, constantly losing the first round. They've got unbelievable talent with guys like Krill, guys like Boldy, good goaltending, guys like Brodeen, Erickson Eck, now Rossi, great, great squad. However, something to always keep in mind with this wild team, dude, they have over $14 million in dead cap with the Parisian yeah. Sierra buyouts. And that is, people don't really realize, that's 17.5% roughly of your entire cap. That just significant every season they have to deal with like think about that that's two seven million aav contracts that you can't give someone then that's a lot those are very significant players players making less than seven million dollars brad marchand like a, a guy like that is the type of guy who could be on this team so it's just something to think about with the wild um so really good stuff yeah i'm pumped them. for him and yeah. I, we we have said a million times Minnesota loves hockey. It's sick when Minnesota's good. Yeah. They deserve better. And this was going to be a tough one to swallow because for the last few years, you've been that new Leafs, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. And this was a very much like, like, okay, perfect example. Buffalo is super disappointed this year mm. because they felt like they were about to make another big step. Mm -hmm. And so far they haven't. Yes. But once you kind of take the medicine of that disappointment, you're like, well, we're still, there's still a really bright future. Like, I, I, I like our chances next year, you yeah. know, I, I think. If you're the wild fan base and this goes as bad as it was going, you're like, oh, no. Because I feel like you were just this first-round exit playoff team anyway for years and yeah. years and years. And you're like, yo, something's going to change, right? And now you're bad. And I'm like, wait, you might just be bad now. Yeah. You know, so that's, you don't want that. You so do not want that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they turn it around. Yeah. Speaking of teams who need to turn it around the New Jersey Devils, and they've got a big tilt tomorrow in the Hughes showdown. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first time they've all played against each I other? I believe so, because Luke, Luke was came only in last seven year during games. the playoffs, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, he got, he got, you know, you know four, a few games, four games, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. So this will be the first time the three Hughes boys are on the ice together playing each other. What I found really interesting is leading into the season, this was not the script we were expecting. Oh my God. Right? We were expecting yep. the probable best team in the Met in the Devils playing a hopeful, maybe getting things back on track playoff bubble team in the Canucks. And Only now, good on paper Canucks. Canucks top five probably team in the NHL going up against the Devils who are out of the playoffs currently. That it, yeah. is a wild switch. And out of their depth at yeah. the moment. Uh, the... I hope, well, let's talk the fun part of it first. Yes. Um, it's two points, and they certainly matter to everybody, but especially the Devils, you want to get that win. But I really hope they get to take a minute here. And it's easier for Quinn because he's like, I'm the fucking MVP and, mm. and on a first place team or whatever they are. But the um, I hope Jack and Luke too can can all, and the, and the parents and everybody can take a beat and be like, bro, <laughs> we were playing knee hockey yeah. together as Sick. toddlers, and now we're all on the same NHL sheet. I can't wait. Uh, this past week, that photo surfaced of Willie Nylander's first year. In yeah. The, he was living. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. And it's just so fun seeing all of them, how young they are. But I can't wait for that first moment. Everyone's going to be watching it like a hawk when all three are on the ice at the same time, mm -hmm. you know? But what an amazing situation. You've got a, you know, seventh overall pick in Quinn, a first overall pick in Jack, and a fourth overall pick in Luke, all on the ice together. Quinn's a captain. Jack's an assistant captain. Luke is a, you know, going to be a Calder finalist. Killing probably. it, yeah, yeah. Like, yep. This is just so, so cool. And one of those things that you stop during the during the season just to acknowledge some cool storylines. Yeah, how unreal is that? Amazing. Yep. I hope they all score. Same. Um, and because otherwise, dude, you know, like if Quinn gets one, honestly, if like Quinn and Luke get one or something, 
and then they just go have to go home for Christmas, and the Jack's sitting there like I'm the clown. Dude, so yeah, they real. but they all got to get on the score sheet somehow. And maybe I would take like I would take a tie even go to a shootout, and I think you got to pump them out all out there. If that goes to a shootout, both benches have to make sure all the Hughes brothers shoot. And I'm sorry, but that's what has no, to no, happen. You have to. Yeah. And here's the thing, I think as the older brother, as the mature one, Quinn, you guys are doing great. You you know the Devils need to get back on track here. You got to give them two points. Yeah, go to the shootout. That's their Christmas gift. Toss them two points. <laughs> Jack gets nothing under the tree, and he's like, "The fuck." Quinn's like, "Dude, enjoy those two. Yeah, I got you two. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I think um, that's so that'll be awesome. The hockey part of it, dude. Uh, I'm I was huge on the Devils start of the yeah. year. I'm not writing their obituary yet, but you know. If I'm on the BetMGM app, I'm putting money on the Canucks money line. Yeah, me too. Pretty effortlessly. Me too. Not even thinking about it. Fingers just going. Don't don't even think. They just go. Boom. Canucks money line. Boom. Submit. Just easy. Two units. Boom. Easy Done. stuff. Let's stick in the Met and talk about a team who we have not given flowers to really yet this yes, year. Yes, thank you. The Philadelphia Flyers are much, much better <laughs> than anyone expected yes. and have turned into a bit of a fun team to watch this season. So, shout out our boy Austin King. Yeah. Big Flyers guy. Has been disappointed in the lack of Flyers talk, honestly, on the pod. Yeah, he, he gave us a bit of a sewering. Yeah. I'm talking about the Flyers. And a deserved one. A deserved one. A deserved one. So, here's what I wanted to say. Who was, do you remember who he was all fired up about? I was looking at their point leaders and someone... We were talking about Sanheim. I think Sanheim's that's who he was fired an up. unreal yeah. season. I think he's emerging as one of the better players going right Yep. Now. 16 yeah. points already. Tremendous. Yeah. Um, one thing I think is fun is Katahat is back to the promising form he was showing as a rookie, I yes, would say. Agreed. And I don't I don't know his exact rookie numbers. Right now, nine oh nine save, uh two point six eight goals against. He'd love to see that. Love to see those numbers. You can win with those numbers. You sure can. I think and we said this to Austin, one thing I think is funny, because when he brought that up, I was like, Why haven't we been talking about the Flyers? And it's it's cause there's not actually any really interesting storylines other than the fact that they are better than we thought, which yeah. is interesting, but it's not like someone's popping off or like Carter Hart's the Vesna front runner. You know, I'm just yeah. like, Oh yeah, the Flyers won again. They're kind of floating yeah. around that 500 spot. There's yeah, no a little turmoil. better. What are they? They yeah, wrote it down. Better. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Like the Flyers are 12 to N and two. Yeah. Like yeah. look at their win percentage, right? It's yeah, like just, just over 500. Yep. I mean, that's great. Yep. And there's no turmoil going on with torts. Yeah. That's good. It's like, there's, there's everything's just peaceful. Yep, it's peaceful, and you're you're off to a better better track than you were. Um, Carter definitely playing better. I think you're just getting great great performances from guys like Lottie, guys like Konechny, who's the best. Yeah, yeah. Sanheim, like we talked about, Couturier, awesome stuff. Uh, and you got the rookies too. Mm-hmm. Their rookies are playing well. Y- you've got which the, is which has been a thing that doesn't really happen on Torts teams all the time. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. This is what I wanted to transition it to. Austin said something where he was like, this cements Tort as a, as a great coach. And, and first of all, I would say, I would think largely the whole hockey world thinks that like Torts is a, is a good hockey coach. Um, looking at his full career, definitely lately uh, I'm, I've been of the camp of when he's like yelling at Zegras for Michiganing, you know, like I hate that version of Torts. I'm like, shut up, dude. But I, I admit I bitched about the Torts hiring last year because i thought tank for bedard torts is too good of a coach to get you last you're not going to be last anymore but he's not good enough to take this group and make them even fun to watch so you're just going to be that like best of the worst teams yeah which is kind of no chirps but kind of what they were last year and this year dude they are fun to watch period like i think we can talk about this in a second but i think this is going to fade a bit and i'm not totally buying it yet but god damn it dude Good, good on you, Torts. Like, I thought there was no chance in hell through 20-some-odd games that I think Torts could have this team over 500, and he fucking sure did. Sure does. I agree, dude. And, and what I think is really interesting with this Flyers team is you've got those leaders, right, in guys like Konechny, uh, Couturier, Sanheim, Lottie, playing really, really well. Carter Hart's playing really, really well. You've got Brink, Bobby Brink, uh, you know, young young stud mm-hmm. on the team. He's got 11 points in 19 games, I think. You've got Mitchkov eventually coming in and you've got cutter Gauthier who looks so nhl ready yep. also coming in and i'm sitting here going 
this is the most exciting time for the Flyers in a long time. In a minute. And I think people came into the season going, it's going to be more of the same shit. Yep. We'll be lucky if we get through this season without firing torts and thinking, Jesus Christ, the sky is falling. And now they're fucking hitting, they're blocking shots, they're fucking playing hard. It's awesome. I will say, did, did someone say, one of us say that Carter Hart was going to get traded? Was that one of our three? That he was one of your three? It was one of mine, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I still want to talk about it. So that's what I was thinking. The If this fades a little bit, which I think it will, if it doesn't fade like at all really, but yeah. they're just a 500 team the whole way, now I am like, mm. oh, he will, because he's, um, he's playing good enough. Because if they sucked... Everyone's like, he's going to get traded. But I was like, yeah, but if they suck, that means Who's he's being bad. Yeah. yeah. So, but right now I'm like, oh, this is the exact sweet yeah. spot where Carter Hart does go to the fucking Oilers or something who is just a goalie away. The Devils, you Here's know, the like question, dude. Yeah. I guess they wouldn't get some of the Flyers Jersey, hockey but. back. Yeah, I think so. Congrats, Philly. God damn. It's unbelievable. No Bucky warm up topic of mine. The way too early Celebrini watch. I just had a question for you right now because there's been some tough eight seed battles and by the way we had a bunch of questions on that when i said this last time i'm talking about the divisions like there are four eight seeds in the four divisions. yeah we gotta start saying eighth place eighth place seed is a playoff seed yeah so the there's been some interesting eighth places right now yeah like the senators i'm like you are not bad nope. right even the habs if and it's not them but i'm just saying no. if it ends up the habs i mean it's gonna be at this rate habs <clears throat> sabers uh sends and yeah i'm like you're all there yep so the two teams that look kind of brutal so far are the Sharks and the Hawks. Yes. You know, the the Blue Jackets aren't great, the Simpsons aren't great, but the, the Sharks and the Hawks look kind of brutal. Um, so I just thought that, and obviously I know there's a lottery and they're not guaranteed to get the top pick, mm-hmm. but it is kind of fascinating to me that it, Celebrini could be going to the Sharks and the Hawks because they're both sick storylines. Either he goes to the Hawks and you get Bedard and Celebrini back to back. Bedard bigger than him, but still two massive prospects back to back. Taze and Kane all over again. Here we go. Or he goes to the Sharks and you have Will Smith and Celebrini, BCBU, like right now entering the league together, playing playing on the same team. Yes. Which one is cooler? Which one do you want? Uh, I want to? I want the Sharks. Yep. For, I think for obvious reasons, and I think him and Smitty playing together would be awesome. I think Sharks hockey is awesome. Uh, personally, I <laughs> I said this on the AMA on Sunday. I think. This is very much a tinfoil hat situation. I'm like, obviously, he's going to the Blackhawks. Yeah, it's rigged, dude. It, it's it just rigged again. Feels like the, I think Taves went third, Kane went first, back to back years. It was the the Hawks were in the fucking dumpster. They got Taves. He was immediately the captain after that first year. You know, maybe a couple or something like that. Uh, then they get Kane and then be- begin dynasty. Yeah, and I'm like. Is anyone surprised that we might be staring down the barrel of, oh my God, the Blackhawks were in the biggest dumpster fire situation we've seen in decades. Look at how terrible they are. Taves is gone. Kane is gone. All of the old faces are gone. There's scandals going on. The Blackhawks are a joke. Bang. They get the first overall pick in suspicious fashion. Yep. Bang. Connor Bedard's on the team. Bang. Celebrini is now in the league. Uh-oh. Looks like that might be the next first overall pick for the Hawks. Three more cups. Minimum, minimum. I, I just think if 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 it happens, and anyone is surprised, <laughs> you need to tighten your tinfoil hat. We and get heard it here. Way. Okay. Well, I hope I'm I'm with you. Yeah. I hope it's the shark. I hope it's the shark so bad. Well, actually, be kind of this. The other teams. I'm. I wonder who's who's in last in the. Oh, it's Ottawa. Ottawa, Columbus. Columbus yeah. will be down there. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, Ottawa Columbus would be, be fun. sick. Columbus would be, be fun sick. too. You know, so we yeah. got, we got options too. Yeah. But here come the here come the Hawks. Okay, my last no bucket for you. Uh, McDavid was inducted into the Canadian Walk of Fame. Yes, the other day. Talk to me about this. So, dude, I clicked on this because, like, what is that? And it was funny because it was even like the Oilers had a few days off in their schedule, so he could attend. And I was like, did they like plan this around yeah. <laughs> the Oilers schedule? But, dude, I'm dying because it says. Connor McDavid was honored to be enshrined in the Can- in Canada's Walk of Fame as a member of the 2023 class. Uh, it's different. It's great to be part of this country, blah, blah, blah. The other inductees, and it lists a bunch of people, including Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Connor McDavid and Avril Lavigne. Just, you like that? Just inducted into the same just those two? Walk of Fame. And it says... It says um, the, the event recognizes notable Canadians for excellence in their respective fields. And I was like, this, yeah, McDavid, hockey, Avril Lavigne, 
punk rocking? Hell yeah. Right right there, dude. Neck th- and neck. Okay, I thought you were going to disparage Avril. No, dude. I was going to lose my mind. He is the Connor McDavid of punk rock. Yeah, hell yeah. And, 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 I was going to say the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah, like I can't believe, I'm actually insulted she wasn't in already. I, I think if you were to say, you talk to a hockey fan <laughs> and you're like, you know, Con- you know who Connor McDavid yeah. is. Who would you say is the Connor McDavid of the punk rock world? Avril's coming out of their mouth in the in top three names for sure. Yeah. I could, I'm, I'm, I'm fuming she wasn't already in. Yeah, it's like the Ramones, Avril. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need. Who, who is who is the Conor McDavid of dating skater boys, would you say? Probably her. Yeah. It's gotta be. I can't really think of any other prominent ones. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. That's her respective field. Yeah. So if you yeah. are excellent in that field, you are in. Avril's money. She is money. Uh, isn't she i really love when things like this come up and you have two unlikely i, I like an unlikely pairing yeah it's kind of like when you go on those instagrams and you see the unlikely f- uh animal friendships it's like a fox and a badger <laughs> walking around and shit <laughs> that's they, awesome they should take a picture together that would dude, do numbies how oh, yeah. does that oh, dude. how has that not Honor happened dude? and avril together that's numbies numbies yeah we gotta make that happen dude yeah i bet this must be a big picture from the event I'll, of, I'll do some digging but anyway can, big congrats to connor big congrats to avril big congrats to avril yep all right let's strap on those buckets and get into the next segment we're getting into hot ice mm-hmm. some of the hottest mm-hmm. topics going on in the game right mm-hmm. now there's one that i saw elliot friedman talking about that i really really want to dive into hit me we both had tampa pretty low in our season predictions i think i think i had him making playoffs still you had him just outside of playoffs no but i think i had him four is that right? I thought it was or maybe had five. Had four. No, the guy had him four. You no, had him I had five. the bees lower than them because I, I yeah you had bees championship five. pedigree. That's right. Yeah. Either way, they are currently not doing so hot. They mm-hmm. are on a four game mm-hmm. losing streak, I believe. Maybe four. Maybe three game. Uh, uh, four. I think four. it's four. Yeah. Bolts are currently ten, ten, and five. Uh, well, there's a game playing right now. Okay. Yeah. Two nothing. But you know, at, at, yeah. at the time of recording here on Monday, they're ten, ten, and five, fifth in the Atlantic and fourth in the wild card race. Stammer, however, has 10 goals, 14 assists, and 24, uh, for 24 points in 23 games. He's Sicko. a dash 15, though, <laughs> which is a crazy stat for him. Yeah. The bigger topic for me is this. Stammer still does not have a new contract, mm-hmm. and by all accounts, there is zero movement on that. We have to accept the reality that if things continue on this trajectory for the Lightning and they are not in the playoffs, that Steve Stamkos is the number one deadline target and will be dealt. Thoughts? When this Lightning, when Stammer said that they were, they didn't call, Mm -hmm. I said on this very program that my initial reaction was shocked and then I was like, oh, of course you don't call. You, you, you ghost. That's the modern world. You just ghost. And then, then, then the, the other person knows it's over. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, they are ghosting. They're, 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 they're gassing him up. They're, they're, they're getting him out of here. They're yeah. ghosting him out of here. The, and then we had a debate about, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, would, could he come back for a decent price? Like you, you felt pretty strongly. Like if they get through this season with no contract, he's gone. Yeah. Do you still feel that way? Okay. So here's my Here's my take, and I'm and I'm I'm very ready, <laughs> I'm very ready to be wrong, and I'm very ready to cut this clip and humiliate me when the new contract news breaks. Yep. But here's my take: I think we are currently watching the last season that Steve Stamkos plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. Okay. I think this team is going to continue to battle and struggle, and I think the competition in the Atlantic is too big, and I don't think they're going to make playoffs, and I think he's going to be dealt at the deadline, probably for a. Um, salary eating de- deal i think they'll eat you know 50 percent to get him to a contender something like that but i think stammer is gone at the deadline okay so what i think is if i'm looking at the state of the atlantic mm. moving forward and i look about and i look at my roster which is not that old like they had a ton the of miles on themselves on them for the last few years but everyone i, I feel like everyone's like 
you know, aging, Tampa's aging out yeah. of it. And I'm like, it's really only Stammer and Hedman. Yeah. You know, like Kalorn's gone. It's like they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're over 30 guys are not that. But like when you have a Braden Point on that team, you have a Kucherov on that team, a Vasilevsky on that team. Like Sorelli, you, you like, are, yeah. you are a disgustingly good hockey team. Yeah. If I, if I look at the state of the Atlantic, I do believe it is, it could be good business to move Stammer before he maybe walks for free mm-hmm. uh, and get back, even get back a, a young piece or a pick, not ideally, but like oh, something. Oh, I think, oh yeah. Yep. I, I think Steve Stamkos goes, if you're if you're a team looking to get Steve Stamkos, yep. uh, you are looking at a first round pick and a prospect in my opinion. Yeah, okay. So I'm thinking it is good business to do that in that you, and again, I'm not saying lightning or rebuilding. They have fucking young middle-aged studs on the team. But, it is a like on the fly like reload. That's probably yeah. a better word than rebuild. Like yeah. I do think it's good business to move Stammer if you're like I'm, we're going to lose him anyway, yeah. and just reload, yeah. and then you're kind of like right back at it. Especially even if you make the playoffs and you're not going to make a big run. However, however, <laughs> I just don't think it happens because he means too much to the program, to the franchise. I believe that he, he doesn't even need to get a contract this year and he'll still be back. I know you think I, I'm crazy about that, but I'm like, dude, he is going, even if they play this whole fucking year and even if they miss the fucking playoffs, he's going to enter the summer free agency. Maybe he'll kick tires, see what's out there, and then he ends up back up with him. Yeah. He just, I think he loves it there. His family's there. Oh, for the sure. The team knows he can produce still. And I think they just didn't want to get into an extension that they weren't happy with. Because yeah. they felt pressure because it was his last year. Yeah. Now they'll have leverage of seeing what the other teams are offering, you know? So, like, because before it was just pulling numbers out of your ass. Who, who's his agent? Who knows? I'd imagine. Uh, I actually don't know. Either way, my point is if there's, if the, if all the other league is offering, you know, older Steven Samco's this, now they have some leverage to be like, hey, dude, we're, you're not, you're not demanding these numbers you thought you were. Yeah. And they can even maybe come under that to be like, you want to stay in Tampa, don't you? You know, let's, let's try to help us reload here. I'm, I love your guess. I'm positive he's a bolt next year. Okay, I love it. I mean, I love that take. And, and you're you're right. I do. I think he means so much to the franchise. I also think that he. I know that he loves it there. Family loves it there. I I do think if this happens, it's all them, not him. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think that the Tampa Bay Lightning and that fan base and that city. I think that city is a is a Lightning city. Oh fuck yeah. No 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 doubt about it. And I think with Cooper and I think with the, the guys that they have, it is personally their, their culture is winning. And I, I think you still win with Stammer. Look at those numbers. He's playing a yeah. point per game still. The no contract this past summer. Gnarly. Ma- raised eyebrows. For Gnarly. Me. The no contract still raises eyebrows for me. And it's interesting because it's not one of those things where, you know, Last year, Pasta didn't have. Yeah, a contract when did he Boston. sign? Do you remember? Like what time of the year? It's signed in the new year. Okay, yeah, he did. Great. And that said, the conversations were all positive. Yeah, Every time yeah. someone checked in, it was like, "We're fine, we're mm-hmm. fine, we're fine." And Pasta was like, "Yeah, you know, we're just figuring it out." These ones sound negative. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's either Tampa's going like this, dude, we'll give you two years at blank. You know, let's call it three. Mm-hmm. You know, three AAV. And and we're we're asking you to take a discount because we want you to stay here, but like we need to figure out what we're doing here. You're not the one C of the future, so we've got to figure out how we're shifting, and we can't give you seven mil right now. And Stammer might be like, dude, I, I'm 33. Is he 33? I'm just, I'm is he turned right 34 now. yet? I think he's 33 still. I'm looking right now. But there might be a world where Stammer's like, dude, I've got four years left, and I I deserve eight million. And I don't think he's wrong. He's playing at a point per game. He's unbelievable. There might be a world here, dude. I'm just saying where Tampa is like this. He he is worth that, but it's a bad investment for us because right. we need to switch to the next regime here. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm wondering. I know. Again, it's good to wonder. Yeah. Um, yeah the the last thing I'll say on this is, don't you think the Lightning community, which we both agree is huge, yes, and passionate, would revolt? No, I do not. Really, I think they would be utterly devastated. But again, dude, it's one of those things where <laughs> it sounds, you know, it, it, different situations. But look at Joe Pavelski going to Dallas. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. 
And it was different because the sharks were, 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 were bad. bad. Yep. But here's the thing, dude. This is what I'm talking about. The Lightning are currently out of playoffs. Yep. Everyone still holds them in this high regard, as they should. And they have an insanely stacked roster with revolutionary talent in guys like Vassy and Kucherov and Hedman and Snammer. Mm -hmm. But they're out of playoffs. If they're like this, dude, we need to change things up. Uh, people will be devastated. They'll be so pissed. There will definitely be fans, a lot of young fans who are like, oh my God, I'm, I'll never like this team again. And then they'll be right there on opening night. It is not a revolt situation. This is not a, the Oilers are in second to last place. We're trading Connor McDavid. That is a revolt. Yeah. Stammer being traded and moving <laughs> on is just like a dagger in the heart. You are devastated, but you just go like this. It's business. Potentially good business. Like it, it would, I do think the path situation is like path meant everything to that Sharks team and organization along with Joe and along, Marlo. and along with Marlo. Also left. But like Marlo left, yep. you know, it's like this, this stuff happens. Yep. Yeah. I guess I'd be more willing to buy it if they continue this poor play or even a little bit worse if they're like That's a little below 500 yeah if they were if they were you know, for, you know first second even yep. third we would not be having this conversation but they're fifth and they're fourth in wild card so i'm like yeah this conversation needs to be yeah, as long as they're in the hunt he stays yeah. let's talk about another underperforming team this can be quick because we know exactly what needs to happen but the new jersey devils here we are we are a quarter of the way into the season and they are not good What's their record? Look that up for me, because I got other numbers to give you. The, okay. the The Devils currently have the best power play in the league. They have the 25th PK in the league. Bad. <laughs> Top 10 in goals for and ninth most goals against. So just like Minnesota, right? This is pointing to one problem that we've talked about. It's goal. Over and over and the over. The goaltending is not doing well for the Devils. Akira is currently at an 891 save percentage, 3.27 goals against. And Vitek is at an 879 save percentage. 3.49 goals against. Dude, it's brutal. Just brutal. I can't believe, I cannot believe the amount of heat we took last year in the playoffs when we said, when we said VTech wasn't yeah. a, a, the, the guy. We said, where is your goalie? And they went, what the Dude, are you talking about? We have one of the best goalies in the league. And, and sometimes I expect it. Like we chirp Stuart Skinner all the time and I'm like, I'm ready. I'm expecting that he's an all-star chirps. And you're right. He is. You know, like, I'm like, okay. The VTech people, I was not expecting. I was like, wait, are you mad about this? I was shocking. And and yeah, here we are. And my point is this. Uh, I think it is a disaster if this team misses the playoffs. Oh, dude. This is a, this is a truly horrifying blacks backslide and what what sucks about saying that is them being as good as they were last year was out of nowhere yeah we, like we talked about there was the fire lindy chance going mm -hmm. on in the mm -hmm. first eight games of the season they they went on a you know insane heater and then they finished second in the met i think is that right right behind yes. carolina yep. yeah about like a point beat the ranger yeah. uh, what a season what a season god breakout years for for jack and nico and now here they are they've added toff who's playing amazing they've added meyer mm -hmm. they've got luke meyer, on yep. the back end yeah. um you know i just can't believe how poorly this team is playing and we have seen things in edmonton turned around with the with the coaching change we've seen things Ooh. now only through three games yeah in minnesota with a coaching change Devils, I'm not saying you have to fire Lindy. I would never, ever talk about someone's job like that. Yep. You either need to make a change in the coaching staff, or you need to not, certainly not wait for the deadline. You need to trade for a goalie right now. Because okay. this team, the, the wild struggling sucks. Playoff team last year, you know? Mm -hmm. But this team being this bad right now is unacceptable soldier and something needs to happen yeah i like i like this from you because it i don't know i mean the crowd chanting it is not the management thinking about it but it's like <laughs> it was in the ether last year to fire your coach you know and you just have this crazy turnaround yeah. that now it's like well if you're just bad again like this, they are what they were at the beginning of last year, early, 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 you know? So I'm like, oh, wait, is this the, uh, like, I, I always hate doing other sports things, but I remember being a Red Sox fan, Mookie Betts, when he was really young, he was like an MVP candidate one year and then was kind of shit the next year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, is he shit or is he sick? And then the next year he was an MVP candidate. And I was like, oh no, that, that was the, the fluke. Yeah. And now you got to be going, wait, was the second half of last year the fluke? If you're the devils. And it feels like that's impossible. Nice, cool. 
feels like that's impossible because of the players you just listed. Like that roster with those names should be a good team. Yeah. So I'm like, what is what is going on? The wild, I'm like. Yeah, swing the coach axe because Gus, he's just got to be good. Come on, you know? Yeah. And then even the Oilers, I, even though I'm always speaking him, I get being like, well, Stewart, we got we to gotta ride Stewart here a little bit. Like, I think he could be the guy still. I kind of get that. With the Devils, even though I have some fears about maybe Lindy needing to be a new voice in there, it, you are 100% right. It's like, man, we have a massive glaring issue. Soka is young. Mm-hmm. Very. And I think it's hard to give up big, not that it has to be big assets, but it's hard to give up assets when you, for, for a goalie stopgap, when you feel like you have something waiting in the wings. Mm. Like, I think if I'm management, I'm like, ah, oh, God, like it's almost, it was almost, um, and obviously it worked out so well, but it's why I was annoyed with the Allmark signing originally. Cause I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I don't need this. But it also is the cardinal sin of GM, GMing to waste windows. So I'm like, I I don't care if you have fucking Ken Dryden waiting in the wings. You need to fix this issue right now to give this Devils team the best chance they can to win right now. Um, And there's going to be ones available. We've been talking about it for a couple months. So that's, I'm totally with you. And yeah, I, I think you can't waste window. And obviously the core of this Devils team is young, but you have... Jack playing out of his mind. You have, you know, he's slow right now, but you brought in Meyer, you brought in mm-hmm. Toff. <clears throat> so I'm kind of sitting here going, you can't make them upset yeah. either. Though Those guys will not accept missing the playoffs. And we were just talking about it. There have been a bunch of people saying UC Saros, and I'm, I look at the Preds who've just won fucking like yeah. know, eight straight six straight or whatever. That was and, trickery though. And what's that? That was trickery though. I don't think it was, dude. And and also like we're in the trots rebuild. Mm-hmm. If you if you are are trots, you've come in and you're kind of reorganizing organizing this team and you get rid of UC Soros, you're the dumbest fucking person on earth. I call and it I preseason. Not, I know. I think they're going to do it. And you, sir, are dumb. <laughs> and I just don't think trots is dumb, so I need people to start stop talking about that trade. However, because of the situation where he is a UFA next year, the the struggles of past years, Carter Hart, mm. I think, is a very interesting, you know, he's a young guy. He would fit in perfectly with this Devils group. I could see Carter Hart being dealt because the Flyers may be sitting in this limbo period where they're like, we're not going to make playoffs this year, but we are looking towards the future. Mm-hmm. And if you talk to Carter and you're like this, look at us, dude, we, we've got... Good guys coming in, and we've got good young guys on the team right now. Do you want to resign? And he's like, no. You trade yeah. him, and I, I think the Devils are the first call I make. Do you, okay, so, and I, I know your answer already, but I'm kind of surprised you don't care at all about the in division. Like the Flyers are just going to give their goalie to the Devils. Like I don't know that they would do that. Again, it's a situation of if you're going to lose him anyway, get something back. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I fucking hate that bullshit. Right. It's such, I know <laughs> it's such bitch ass mind t- mindset in my opinion of like, Oh, don't, tr- don't trade someone to your right. Ri- um, dude, beat your rival. It doesn't fucking matter. Agree. But wouldn't you say, cause cause of the playoff format, you have to play the, you know, your division all the yes, time. It doesn't matter to me. But if, if I'm, if you're like, damn, that devil team is good, but they're one piece away. I'd, I n- wouldn't necessarily want to be the one to give them the piece. Again, like I said, I'm not going, you know what I want to do? I'm going to make a move here. Like, it's just a totally random move. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move this player. He's playing great. And just pick up the phone and call the Devils. I'm saying if you talk to a Carter Hart and he goes, I am not signing here. Yeah. I go, okay, I need to move you now then because mm-hmm. I'm not an idiot. I'm going to get something for you while I can. Yeah. I then look around the league and go, who needs a goalie? And I then call all of those teams and go, Give me the best offer. And if the Devils are the best offer, I take it. Okay, yeah. And I think I go... I think You're right, I would call them. You take, like, the second best offer. Probably, if it's close. If it's and not. And I would definitely call the Devils. I'd find all the goalie teams yeah. and then put the Devils last. Like, I'd call everyone oh, yeah. first. yeah, I would call them last. Too. And then I'd be like, but, oh, yeah. God damn it. So, yeah, okay. Um, it'll be interesting because it was a flaw last... It was a fatal flaw eventually last year, I would yep. say. And it, it looks uh, fatal right now. I agree. Um, this is a great segue because the next topic I wanted to discuss with you is the, the state of the Met. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you the standings right now. You know what's a better 
segue than saying it's a great segue. You do that all the time. Just going into the segue. <laughs> You, he does you, that to me all the time. Not all the time. I've done it, but you think you just roll right in. You had it. It was a perfect layup. Something to think about. It is. Uh, the New York Rangers mm. are the best team I've ever played against. Yep, best team of all time. Um, the Hurricanes in second. I kind of expected that, but not their record, but I expected them to be up there. The Capitals, ridiculous. Shocking. The Islanders, ridiculous. The Flyers, ridiculous. Ridiculous. The Penguins, the Devils, and the Blue Jackets. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, Devils being down there, ridiculous. Ridiculous, yep. Um, the Rangers, I'm very happy to say, are tremendous. Everything's working, awesome. and they are... Simply awesome. ...easily making the playoffs, and I'm willing to end the division race now. Me too. Straight up. They're going to win. One seed, boom, that's over. Let's go, Brian. What's up, dude? Dude. Brian's stop. It. Is your on? Is that can the YouTube people see that? They can, right? Brian's uh, hell yeah, they can see that. Stop, Brian's gla- stop glazing. Sweater is lit. Last week we told you guys he the Rangers t- took him to a game and he did his TikTok thing there, and then yeah. they fucking gave him this drip. They actually they were giving out other shit too, and the guy that was taking us around, David, good guy. He had he gave Brandon's girlfriend this one, like, and, and I saw it in the bag, and he's like, "Oh wait, I'm gonna run up to my office and get you one," but I didn't know what it was gonna be. Yeah, and I was like praying it was this one. Yeah. And then he came back down with it, and I fucking, like, cheered like a fucking, like a six-year-old. I was like, whoa, let's go. I can't believe you didn't ask, dude. Name five players on the Rangers. <laughs> Mika Zibanejad, <laughs> Jacob Truba, Chris Kreider, Igor Shesterkin, Jonathan Quick. Boom. Uh, <laughs> I can keep going, maybe. Could you? Wait, do you only ask for five? Uh, Keandre Miller. Let's go. Okay, nice. All right. Well <laughs> done, tendies, Ryan. Two tendies, too. <clears throat> yeah, the two. The, yeah. The, the, I said keep going because he said quickie, and I was like, <laughs> I won't accept these two tendies. Sick. But <laughs> um, that was well done. Okay, <clears throat> so, Dan, <clears throat> looking at this roster, yeah. lineup right here of the Met, who do you think makes the playoffs right now? I'm saying we did yeah. our review. Reassess right now. Yeah. Who's in after 23, 24, 20 games? Who's in? I'm locking the Rangers and the Hurricanes. Okay. Uh, and that's easy for me. I agree. Um, I strongly believe the Devils are going to figure something out. Yep. I just think Nico will start getting into his groove after the injuries. I think Meyer will find his groove. Um. I, and I, I, I do truly do more than anything, Chris. I think they, they will do something. They have to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's caveat that. They do something. Either get a goalie or fire Lindy. Yeah, okay. Which I would never. Yeah. Well, never. How could you? I would never say to do that. If they do something, I think they figure it out. And I am gonna, I'm going to put the caps in, dude. Really? I think the, I think the Islanders, Pitt, Columbus and Philly miss. It's fucking disaster for Pitt. Uh, it is, but it's also not surprising. You know, like it's a we, little surprising. We all said uh, we're, they're not a cup team with that move, but they're definitely in. We all said that they're definitely in the playoffs now. They're just they did not solve enough problems. I see, yeah, I, I don't know if, if we were thrown around the world. We're definitely willy nilly. Willy nilly. I'm surprised for them to miss the playoffs. Yep. But I, I also said, are you going to make playoffs? Yeah. But yeah. are you great? No. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely going worse than it should have. But Because it should be Devil's Pit. Like, I'm looking at this and I'm like... Cause the, yeah, I think it should be Devil's Pit or Devil's Islanders. Yeah, sure. So, so to, to me, looking at the state of the Met, my two biggest surprises are Washington and New Jersey. Yes, absolutely. So Philly is a blast. Can't hang, I don't think. I think they're going to sit. I think they're going to sit right where they where they are. I think they're going to finish the season over five hundred. <laughs> really? And I think they're going to finish like fifth. Wow. Be like yeah. I think they'll finish slightly. I under. have no. I I don't think I have any reason to believe that they're going to lose steam. They're all. They're so young. They're so lively. They're so. Well, because this is what's crazy, and this is why I wanted to bring this up. The Rangers are a plus twenty this year. Yeah. Sick. Yes. Uh, let's see. B. I was going to say this is the best. B's plus twenty two. Vegas, oh, Canucks, Jesus Christ. Canucks and the Kings, 32-31, sick. Pitt is plus 11. <laughs> Pitt in is in sixth place, plus 11, Dan. And the Caps are in third, minus, nine, uh, minus seven, and the Islanders are in fourth, minus nine. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Like, those two teams stink. That math ain't math. And I'm like, dude, you are not good. So I, when I look at this, I'm still like, 
you they are going to finish seventh and sixth in this thing. I do think if you have one of these <clears throat> time lapse things that shows the yeah. standings, I think we are going to see some wild fluctuation of the Met like as we go. The caps, and we like, always talk about right. We talk about the dog days of January, February. Yeah, that is really when shit goes down, and. I think this division will see a lot of shit going down. Me too. And that's why I'm so fascinated by it because, and, and honestly, the points, it's early-ish, but the points, if you kind of account for, account for games in hand, the gap isn't that high still. You yeah. know, like they're all pretty bunched up. So it's not like, it's not like I'm like, oh man, Jersey's 12 points back. This is going to be such a massive road. Like they can get there, no problem. Yeah. It's just so funny to me to look at the Caps and the Islanders. Philly, I think no one, none of us think is going to make the playoffs. And I agree, they probably hang here, but I look at the Caps and the Islanders and I'm like, I think you're going to be like bad still. It's crazy. And maybe I'm delusional, but I'm straight up like the Devils are going to be a comfortable third and Pitt's going to be the fourth seed yeah. and, or the fourth place and maybe a wild Could have. team. It's crazy <laughs> like, how long do the Caps have to just keep winning for me to wake up? But I'm like, you stink. Yeah. And this is not real. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, let's bounce it back to Tampa. We've got two topics left before we move on to this Seth Jarvis interview. Talk about Tampa and talk about one guy in particular, Hedman, my guy. So here's what I want to talk to you about. Right now, they're playing already, right? Yeah, right yeah. now. Victor Hedman is playing his thousandth game tonight. Congratulations, big dog. Stick taps. Yep. He's one of the best defensemen in the league. Um, I, I was printed out a couple, pasted in a couple things from this article on NHL.com because I thought it was pretty cool. He said this about the 2009 draft. He said, I remember having breakfast with the Islanders, and they said, if we pick you, how would I feel if the fan base back home booed me? because <laughs> they had the first pick and they were like, Dude, people are going to be mad if we take you. And he was like, I had a feeling they weren't going to take me after they said that. Obviously they took Tavares. Johnny Todrags goes one. Hedman goes two to the lightning. Dude, Johnny Todrags is a machine as we have learned uh, very seriously after doing the top 100. Unbelievable player. But damn, I would not have guessed they would have lost that draft. Yeah, Hedman a head and shoulders better pick. Oh my God, dude. And, and a lot of that's because he's gone. Like if Johnny Hodrags was still on the Islanders right now and they were perennial contenders, this would be a much harder. Obviously the two cups to no, no cups, but still like Tavares is nasty. But, but the I fact that he I, just bounced. I don't think in that uh, fantasy land we can call them perennial contenders because they were never. I'm saying if he was still there and they were perennial contenders. I, I'm saying even if he were still there, that's what I'm saying. The fantasy land of, of him still. Oh, you're there. saying they wouldn't be. Yeah, because they never were. And yeah, hard, I don't think. Hard if, to say, yeah. I, they were never a, a contender when he was on that team. Uh, I know, but I'm yeah. saying I, it's they went to two straight ECFs when he was gone, and maybe it was because he was gone. But I'm like, I don't know. He's nasty. They could have figured yeah. it out. Um, but yeah, that's crazy because I would not have picked that. Um, obviously, it's really cool. He's done it all for one team. Stammers there over a thousand games too. Like they've just been through so much together. Pretty sick. Um, also, some really cool uh, Swedish player stuff. Um, eighth Swedish born defenseman to ever do it. 18th overall Swedish person to ever do it. Really cool. As I was thinking about Hedman, there are young defensemen in the league right now that we all think are fucking nasty. Mm. Foxy, Chucky, Kale, Darlene. <laughs> Keep going. Haskinen. Haskinen. <laughs> going fo- I love going Fox and Charlie over Kale there. That I was just, you know, <laughs> top of mind, top of mind. And then, of course, there's legends of the game, but even like just going back, I was thinking about you know, because we were just doing the top Bruins, like Ray Borks of the world, you yeah. know. And I was like, I know there's an exact data around this, but I was like, man, I wonder where Hedman ranks of that exact generation. So, like, not guys we'll call ahead of him. Guys drafted in, like, 2008 to now. Yeah, so I wrote down some names. Do you, would you count Chara in that? No. He's too old? Yeah. Okay, so I wrote down some names. So this is, like... Headman's class and like Hedman. these guys are playing right now. Yeah, okay, like everyone great, I'm about to name yeah. is like they're in the league and they have a and thousand games. You want games. me to say uh, if Headman's better? Or you don't what? have to say it on response. Let's let me get the names out. Okay. Brent Burns, Ryan Suter, PK Subban, Eric Carlson, Dewey, Giordano, Mark Stahl, Tanger, Petrangelo, John Carlson, and then like to a lesser degree like Shaddy, OEL, you know whatever. Yeah. Think about those names. I think he- Headman is just. Like definitely the best of hundred percent. Yeah, he is like, the be- He is without question the best in that. I I put like Dewey right behind him. Mm-hmm. Burns, he's got crazy numbers. I will say, not I as much of a defenseman win, as those dude. guys. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, Edmund and Dewey have two cups, mm-hmm. uh, Norris trophies. Yeah, like I think that I think that list is like Edmund and Dewey, and then the rest of them. Okay, I think that's probably right. 
And it was crazy. And maybe everyone already felt this way, but I was like, I saw him get the thousand games. I was like, good for him. Great, great all time defense. Mm-hmm. People will always remember him. Great defenseman. But there are in names that come up in my head that I'm like, they're better than him. They're better than him. But when you kind of zoom in on that, like this class that he's been growing up in the league with, I'm like, oh, dude, you have been, you are the best of them yeah. for like fucking 15 years now. Yeah. And that is sick. That was a huge win for them. That is awesome. Uh, and I mean, I, I, you know, I love Hedman, dude. And when we did our top 100, so many people came for us being like, nah, dude, he's washed. He's too old. Yeah. And I'm just like, look at his stats right now. It's look at the way he plays. I'm like, you guys are out of your minds. Do you want to hear this cool thing um, that his dad said? His dad wrote a letter to him for his thousandth game, which I think is amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. He said, um, you'll never, you will never think you're better than the person next to you. You treat everyone with respect. Son, you've done it all the right way. You came to this town at 18 years old with the weight of the world on your shoulders. They labeled you the best Swedish defenseman since Nick Lidstrom. You took that pressure as a privilege. You embraced it and took it in stride. That's chill. Jesus Christ, dude. My dad just texted me that he didn't spend enough time with me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this my, was probably handwritten. My dad just asked me how to change... <laughs> the text messages he's sending from his iPad from the uh, Gmail address to yeah. his phone number. <laughs> this is probably a handwritten letter. Yeah. And you guys got that. I didn't get anything, so if you think about that, <laughs> my dad doesn't man. speak to me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is really cool. I got one last thing before we kick it off that I really wanted to talk about. This is an idea that I stole from you. Yeah. Legal snipe. I'm allowed to do it. Watching a little bit of NBA. Mm. I know what you're going to say now. They're doing this in-season tournament thing. Most of the listeners know I'm a big uh, football fan, a.k.a. soccer. I love football. I love football. (laughs) If you are a footy fan, you know that there's a lot of domestic cups that go on in-season as you're playing in your, your main league season, Champions League, stuff like that. I think this shit is real cool, and I... I love what the NBA is doing. I really do. I think it more, just adds more attendance in November uh, in NBA history than than Look this at year that, because dude. because they added proof is in the pudding games. I, That's I, a and fact. I, That's and, a fact. And the NBA has always been good at this stuff. Not to glaze the NBA, but you know, like the the different f- floor color shit. Like it yeah, just yeah. it you you can see that something else is going on in in football. They do different jerseys uh, oftentimes. Different. Uh, number fonts mm-hmm. for, for the cup games and things like that. I think the NHL should 100 P institute an in-season cup for uh speed of this segment. We're going to call it the Gretzky cup. Okay. So you have the regular NHL season and I think they should institute Gretzky cup bracket type system. You play certain games, you lose yep. and they, they, they count as regular season games. Yeah. Yeah. You lose, you're out. I think like the NBA, it should be a cash price for players. Okay. So you, you ask about incentives, right? Cash price for players. So if you are on the Blackhawks right now, but you're still in the Gretzky Cup, Sick. that's money. Like yep. you're going into those games, you're not tanking for draft picks because you go, every single guy on this team gets 500K if we win the yep. Gretzky Cup. We're, we're playing. Guys are playing hard. Yep. That's awesome. It's a nice little check. Then what do you think about this idea? In the Gretzky Cup. Yep. If you win the Gretzky Cup, you automatically get if you if you are below this in the seeding for draft pick if you are below the 10th pick you automatically get the 10th if you if you let's say are the rangers and you go wire to wire you win the president's cup mm-hmm. you don't get uh, you know like you you still get whatever uh or excuse me uh you're you're like 30 you let's say they win the cup yep rangers win the cup you have the 30 32nd pick you also win the gretzky the cup. gretzky cup boom 10th overall pick. 10th pick? Yep. 10th? 10th. Bro, if you make the... Pl- I was so dialed till fucking you think 12 that's too, seconds ago. You think that's too good? If you make the let's playoffs... Right, this is an idea. Let's workshop. No, okay, listen to me. Let's workshop. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. If you are... How many teams make the playoffs? 16. Uh, 16 teams make the playoffs. 32 team league, 16 teams make the playoffs. So if you finish not in the playoffs, you go into the draft lottery of 16 teams. Yeah. Okay. We're, and I have I have now solved two thirds of this. You, we still have to solve the last. Yeah, third, yeah. Okay. Now, wait, wait. When, so wait, wait, wait. Thinking about it right now, I'm like this. Yeah, I'm 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 instituting d- utter dominance. No, but here, yeah, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, so 16 work. teams that do not make the playoffs enter the draft lottery. Yeah. Okay. You, if you have won the Gretzky Cup and you're in the draft lottery and your ping pong ball comes out 16, 15, 14, 13, 
12, 11, 10, mm -hmm. you automatically are 10. So if you get, if your ping pong ball goes at 16, but you've won the Gretzky Cup, you go up to 10. Okay. 13, you go up to 10. 10, well, you know, you were good. Congrats. You, so congrats. that's, that's the d d fate was shining upon us. Okay. If you are a playoff team, so if you were one of the 16 teams that made the playoffs, yeah. so you do not even enter the draft lottery and you have won the Gretzky Cup, you cannot jump to 10, but I will allow you to jump to 17. So like the worst playoff team okay. gets 17. I'm into this. All right. You are now 17. I'm into this. If you are a non-playoff team, Worse pick than 10, you are now 10. Here's what we still need to solve, though. If you are a non-playoff team that has won the Gretzky Cup and you finish and, in the and your ping pong get, ball comes up in single digits, higher. yeah, what happens? Yeah, that, that my, my only issue was going to be we're not, we're, they, th that team doesn't get a reward. I think they go to one. I think they go to one because that means a really no, shitty no. team won the Gretzky Cup, which is really hard, and most likely they won't win, so this won't even happen. That's, but in the very rare listen, circumstances where the fucking hey, sharks win the Gretzky hey, Cup, they deserve the first Hey, pick. I rarely say this to you. I love where your head's at. But I think it's too... I, th these are those situations where I, you're, you're drunk on your own ideas. They go it's right to one. No, it's anarchy. They go right to one. Anarchy. What about five? Five? Dude, the, the, there's there's an absolute generational player and then a pretty good guy and then fucking Brian is available at third, okay? So, like, well, you, want, you want to put him at five, dude? Like, like you, just, you just insulted Cutter so badly. Disrespectful <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, I don't think I even know dirty, how to skate. Dude, dude, dirty. I haven't, I haven't worn skates in, like, ten years. <laughs> Jesus. They go right to one. No. Yes. Listen, we've got two-thirds of this idea cooked, though. Yep. So let's keep working on it. Okay. But... We're in on the Gretzky Cup, right? Oh yeah, that's a lock for. Well, next how year. do we think? What do we think about the name? It's perfect. I just think that there's no like. I think oh, there's already like you know like the um, the Gretzky Cup international tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like the Holinka Gretzky Cup or something, but it's but so we might be kind of stepping on that, but I maybe it's like the Gretzky Games. GGS. No, no, no it's got to be Cup. I like okay. Cup. Okay. Um, the Kale McCarr Cup. No, stop. Uh, you're losing people. The fuck? <laughs> you're losing people. Okay, Gretzky Cup it is. Could be the Bobby Orr Cup. The Orr Cup. The Orr Cup is kind of sick. Yeah. Okay, the Orr Cup. The Orr Cup. I think this is an idea that we're going to keep Something thinking to think about. about. We're Something bring it to think about. While we continue this madness, let's kick it off to this Seth Jarvis interview. Like we said, kid's a weapon, having an unreal year. One of the funniest, coolest dudes going. Enjoy. We are pleased... As ever, to be joined by a Manitoba native, the leader in goals and assists for the Portland Winterhawks in 2019, a two-time Winterhawks MVP, a Gretzky Cup silver medalist, the 13th overall pick in 2020 by the Carolina Hurricanes, and a man who can play the first three chords of Tennessee whiskey on guitar. Seth Jarvis, welcome to the Empty Netters <laughs> podcast. I'm absolutely honored. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Is that true about Tennessee whiskey, by the way? Have you have yeah. you progressed beyond the three chords, or is that still where we're capped out? I probably got worse. It was like yeah, it's down to two. Yeah. yeah, it was COVID. We were in Chicago, I think, in the A. One of the guys had a guitar, and he could play Tennessee whiskey. And I was trying to learn, and it was awful. Dude, it's really frustrating how things like that can just leave. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was sitting in a room here in these offices eight months ago, and there was a Rubik's cube, and I was like, you know what? I'd like to learn how to do this. So I Googled it. Figured it out. And then for like three weeks, I practiced it every day to the point where I could just do it easily. And then I stopped doing it for maybe one week. And yeah, now I don't, I don't remember any of it. So yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> Nightmare, dude. It's just a disaster. Uh, also wanted to ask you, I saw, um, well, obviously you're in North Carolina, but the uh, I saw you're a little bit of a Duke basketball guy. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fan. Yeah. Bit of a fan. Yeah. So I went there. So uh, we, sh we share this. We share this fandom. Uh, have you been? Please. Have you been to Cameron Indoor? Have you seen a game? No, I got uh, I got invited to a game against Pitt on January twentieth. I want to say, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there. That'll be my first time. Which oh, be... there you go. Yeah, you gotta go. Okay, dude, you are gonna have a blast. You, it's it's um it's like it feels like a high school gym. It's so small, but they're going ballistic. I mean, obviously you've seen it on TV. They're going ballistic yeah. in there. But yeah, so you're gonna have to and be nice to the kids, dude, because they're like camping in tents for weeks just to <laughs> get tickets, I've and you're just waltzing just in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Why are you a fan? Is, did it happen with just being in North Carolina or what's the deal? Mom no. played hoops, eh? Yeah, my mom played yeah. basketball growing up. Like, that's all she did was play basketball. She played in university. So like, we grew up 
watching March Madness like crazy. And like when you're like eight or nine, you just pick the winner. And Duke <laughs> was always pretty good and kind of winning. So I, I kind of rode on Duke and just never left and just coincidentally ended up in North Carolina where it worked out. And dude, I feel like they're not the most popular squad though. You know, like U- UNC is more of the people's team, right? So like, I feel yeah. like you took, you really yeah. took the elitist squad, bro. I take a lot of heat from fans, people in the organization about it, but I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm this deep. There's no, there's no going back anymore. I think that's like the true Duke nature of it. Stay strong. Like, you got to be the heel. Yeah. Yeah. You got to lean in. That's Amazing. Huge. Good for you. Okay, dude, I want to go back to the draft because I'm pretty sure and correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but I'm pretty sure you're our first guest ever who was part of that 2020 remote draft. Yeah. So, you know, we're always hearing draft stories of like getting people tickets and walking across the stage, but you have a totally different experience, right? So what I know already is they mailed you 31 hats (laughs) and you got God knows what happened to the other ones. And I also know that you genuinely didn't know, like when Carolina calls your name, that was news to you. So that's awesome. But what I don't know is... Who do they mail you a webcam? Like who plugs that in? Did you, when did you decide it was your just family, no friends? And like, are you eating? Are you too nervous to eat? Like, tell me, tell me everything about that at home draft experience. Yeah. So I think the day before we all like get a, they email you like a time to set up with like NHL network or whoever runs it. And you sit on like the laptop like this back then I had this big Lenovo thing. It was brutal. And (laughs) I was sitting in my like living room and like, we couldn't figure out where to sit. So you sit on, you brought a couch in, sit on the couch, got a table, laptop. And this lady's like trying to talk me through the lighting and like where to exactly position it, where you can get, they can get like decent shots when I get drafted and stuff like that. So like we had tape on the floor, so nothing would move and yeah. stuff like that. So that was painful. And then it was kind of like this where I couldn't get on. Like yeah, my, my I was going to say, we know you have issues with technology. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> my whole Wi-Fi is, I may as well live in a McDonald's. It's awful. So like, there's only certain spots in the house where it works. And like, you got, we moved the router to get closer. So like, there's a little connection and it was terrible. Dude, but, have you seen uh, it? It's brutal. Like you, you guys stand up and everyone's hugging and it's yeah. like just a pixelated mess. <laughs> it turns like orange and then they just cut. <laughs> the like I had, when I got drafted, I had like, probably four minutes of interview on there and they just cut it because they yep. couldn't get it yeah done. someone at the nhl was like we just this is not yeah. arable we have yeah, to like, get this i lived in a cave this is ridiculous no one needs to care yeah exactly so i got i got kind of holes that way but yeah just a ton of stuff going on but it, it was fun and then is it bullshit that you actually didn't know like come on give me oh. give me the scoop i pro- yeah i don't even remember really talking to carolina during the year like i had a weird like i was kind of ranked everywhere i was ranked low started climbing up a little bit and maybe talked to them once i was talking to a bunch of teams kind of close to the draft uh in that range but never carolina and then so did did you get a phone call beforehand or was it truly like they called your name and and that was that yeah my thing was lagging i heard carolina (laughs) and then parts of seth and jarvis and i was like oh that's me and then we stood up and everything kind of went blank and then yeah did a couple interviews and rod called me um, there you go later yeah Hit him with the FaceTime. And so Seth's, but, Seth's family is working the antennas on top yeah, of the yeah. team. Was that me? Was that me? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, but what was the scene at the house? Like, did you guys order a big meal? Did you wait to get drafted and then celebrate? Or like, what was what was the situation with all the family? Yeah. Look, well, the COVID rules at that time in Manitoba were pretty strict. So, like, yeah. we broke them. But it was, yeah, like, good. you were supposed to have, like, your, like, just the people that live in the house. And then, like, I think you were allowed, like, one or two more. I had, like... People live in my house, uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I, I got to bring a couple buddies in who like popped oh, in. Oh, sick. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So we had, my buddies were like kind of sitting just to the right of me. And I'm not, I think they might've found out before yeah. from the TV. <laughs> and so they were going nuts. We were all going nuts at the same time. Uh, yeah. No food. Wasn't feeding all those mouths. We just had snacks, yeah. chips around. But yeah, we had a, we had a lot of people. We had like. My mom was so paranoid that people, like the neighbors, would like call the cops on us for having too many people. So we had like guys park three streets down and walk over to our house and stuff like yeah. that. But uh, it, it's was, epic. it was epic. What's what's the uh, go to chip flavor in your house? Oh, all dressed. I think is yeah, yeah, yes, dude. 
That's really I solid. Um, I got to question your fandom again, though, real quick, because obviously there were a bunch of clips that went up um, when you were doing some of that post-draft, pre-draft stuff where you had the Falcons decals all over your room, the Atlanta Falcons. I get the Duke stuff because they were winning, but like the Falcons have been just bad. Dude, how did that happen? Well, going back to the Wi-Fi thing, I had to do the interview in my brother's room because he was closer. Oh, so that's okay. my brother's room. So he like, this is a little con. We grew up like, kind of Michael Vick fans. Like he was really good. No, no dude, he was electric. Yeah, that's okay. Me? Yeah, as, yeah. A, a Falcons Michael Vick was, was electric, there, but on the field, unbelievable. So yeah. we we loved watching him. So I think that's why that's up there. I unfortunately am a Giants fan. Oh damn. Yeah. So <laughs> that's well, rough, rough sledding, but. Hold on, dude, because we're Pats fans, and CP was about to chirp you for you know the Falcons, but now you get to pummel us. Dude, I literally have in my notes oh. to make fun of you for the Super Bowl, and now <laughs> I'm getting dummied twice, dude. Devastating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was actually going to get on the chirp train as well, because there's a Michigan decal in there as well, but is that your brother's as well? Yeah, I got, honestly, Michigan makes no sense. I got no idea where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. Like, I mean, yeah. I need Michigan over Alabama all day, so <laughs> Um. All right, dude. I want to know about Rod. You just mentioned you finally got the call from Rod after you got drafted. Obviously, Rod is famous for the nickname, and it's all true. Like you meet the guy, you look at the guy. He's in unbelievable shape. He's intense, but also the nicest guy in the world. I'm curious. Playing for this guy, you've played for him for a few years now. You obviously it sounds like you guys have a great relationship. Mm-hmm. Is it extra motivation being on that team when your coach could probably put up 60 in the national right now if he suited up? Like, what's it like being with that guy? Yeah, it's it's scary a little bit. I mean, yeah, like, in camp is terrifying because I think all our testing is based off what he can do. So, like, <laughs> like that is it. bullshit, dude. <laughs> that is oh, bullshit. That so like we have like tests and stuff, and like they'll modify if he can't do it, then they'll modify it. But I'm pretty sure he's like the baseline for it. So it's a little scary if you fail something like that because like you're failing to. I don't know how old he is. I don't want to offend him. Fifty, sixty, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, just incredible shape, and like you said, unbelievable dude, and just uh, can get a little intense behind the bench and gets a little scary. He does he has got he's got a wicked stare that yeah. he oh, yeah. to out, but uh, he's he's awesome. There is no way I, I, I bet less than half of that team can bench as much as Rod. Yeah, for sure. There's no chance. <laughs> I'm definitely not in the upper half of bench more than him. He can he he would dominate me in a weight room. Yeah. Oh, for sure. What's what's he like um, you know, pregame speeches in the playoffs? Like is he super animated? Is he is he calm and composed? Like kind of what's his vibe when he's getting you guys going? He's flying around. He's like, he can't stand still. He's like, he's so into it. He's so intense. And he, he's like, just loves it as much as anybody else who's playing. So he's like wheeling around the room and, and like trying to get the words out. He's not the best public speaker, but yeah. <laughs> you can tell where it's coming from. And like, he always, he's always got a good message and a good story or, or whatever to go along with it. But yeah, he's usually ripping around the room, kind of getting everyone going. And then he, what about, what about when he's mad? Like he's screamer or is he like the I'm disappointed guy? it's it's changed over the years i mean to the refs he's a screamer he he yeah. loves to, to braid the refs and yell at the refs i think to us he he screams a little bit but it's more calm not not quite as bad but again it's the stare like yeah right yeah. right i've had a few turnovers and i can feel going back to the bench he's like eyes are locked on me and i just don't want to look I you don't even have to check you don't even have to check you know it dude you know yeah I don't want it. <laughs> just go to the other end of the bench and sit exactly. down and not say anything <laughs> What about off the ice? Because I know you're a bit of a class clown. So does he ever get frustrated with the boys when you're fucking around? Or is he goofy, dude? Is he is he getting in on the pranks on the road? No, I no, he's not. I think I think that's the I think he really likes me as a hockey player and around the rink, but I think as a person away from the rink, he's like, eh. <laughs> he doesn't know how to feel about me a little too much. Like like you said, I, I have a tough time being serious and he's pretty serious dialed in guy, so uh, I'm sure a lot of times he walks around the rink. He can probably hear me yelling throughout the dressing room thinking what an idiot, but I, I hope he likes it. And he's, he hasn't said anything to me yet. So I'm just going to keep it rolling. Oh, if he hasn't said anything, then he definitely likes it. You yeah. need, you yeah, need guys like you, dude. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> you keep him. You keep him young, dude. You know, how do you think he's going to keep setting the fitness bar? If he, if he doesn't have guys <laughs> yeah. like you keeping him happy, um, dude, sure. Rod is a uh, third all time at the dot in his career and you've been taking, it feels like you've been taking a lot more face-offs and draws from the dot this year. 
has he been helpful in that regard? Like what's he, what's he like, you know, with the little things, the little intangibles of the game, you know, helping you day to day. Yeah. He's unbelievable. I spent, I spent a lot of time with him on faceoffs. He's been begging for a right-handed centerman for the last probably two years now. And I'm trying, um, <laughs> he's given me opportunities. I've, I've had some good games, some, some tough games, but, uh, yeah, I, he gives me chances, which I really appreciate. And then, uh, definitely lets me know what I can work on. Yeah. Well, you've been way better, dude. You're yeah. being modest right now. You've been way better. What? And I, well, don't give away any secrets because yeah, I want I was, you to keep winning at the dock. I, but I, like, I, I, I was going to make sure that you didn't have them share yeah. know, the, the tricks that are doing. But well. like, what are some th- things, what are ways to just get stronger on the stick and things like that? I got nothing. I got no tricks. I got no, I, I kind of go in there. Like my, I just don't want to lose clean is kind of yeah, like, right. That's what he taught me is whatever you do, don't get snapped back and we'll be okay. And so that's kind of my mindset going. It's probably not a great one. You probably want to go in the wind, <laughs> but I'm going in there not to lose clean. And usually I can muck it up and I just, at the end, like just being competitive. Like it's just yeah. a, basically just a one-on-one battle. And so I just trust that I'm more competitive than whoever I'm going against. And that if I get a second chance at the puck, if I don't get snapped back, that I can, I can win it. How intense is the stare from Rod when you get snapped back? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yes. You get snapped back in the D zone, dude. How intense is this? Stare? Yeah. Well, like I, I only take draws really on the PK. Yeah. And so it's a thousand times worse because it's weight. Like everyone's power play is pretty good. Like really good now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a thousand times worse. So I guess like, I guess I think when we played Edmonton at home, dry sidle rinsed me like three in a row, just <laughs> bang, bang, bang. And I was just like, I I'd go get me off. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was, yeah. I was trying to crawl on the bench, but it's like looking at his line mates. Like anyone else want to fucking yeah. take this one? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm looking to get tapped out. Yeah. Um, are you a talker at the dot? Like, do you, do you shoot the shit with the boys or are you locked in? I'm pretty locked in. I, I, I want to be like a chirper. Like I want to do that stuff, but like my brain doesn't process quick enough. And yeah. so like, guys will say stuff to me and I'll just kind of give them one like those, like a blank stare and like, I'm like, <laughs> thinking and like, if I try to rush it, just nothing good comes out. Yeah. So I've, I've realized I should keep my mouth shut. I kind of yeah. like the yeah. blank stare, dude. That kid, that would get in my head. I'd be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Dude? Yeah. Say something. If we change yeah. it up from like a dumbfounded look to more of just like you looking at them, like what the fuck are you saying? That might get into their heads, dude. That might be the strategy here. Yeah. It's just a natural dumb look. Yeah. Right. You don't even, have, you're not even acting, dude. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. just my face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I want to ask you something. I saw this, um, you made that comment to ESPN a little while ago about the refs where you were like, uh, dude, I love this. Me too. Where you said it'd be cool to talk to them after the game, like interview the refs to, he- to hear about some calls. Can you expand on that more to me? Because one thing I love, or I feel like a lot of hockey fans love is it feels like one of the only major sports where you're seeing the refs fucking chirping back at the guys out there you know fucking you want one too bitch like they're screaming at you guys <laughs> so can you what's that relationship like for all of us that have never made the national you know like what's that player ref vibe like and talk to us a little bit about what you meant about being able to talk to them about the game too yeah i, I got that take from twitter somewhere i've seen on there but like i think it'd be cool just because there's a lot of little ticky tacky things or, or stuff that maybe a normal fan unless like you you're really down the hockey wouldn't understand would change the course of a game and so for them to be able to talk about it after would be kind of cool and just get their perspective of what they thought. But I don't get to talk to the refs. They give me no time of day. Yeah. I get no respect out there. So I leave that to the older guys, uh, the guys with letters. But I, I definitely have tried to to mingle, and I usually get like a shut up or, or go back to the bench or something. Like yeah, that. right. But dude, Seth, I, I, I love the take too because – I mean, we've all been in that situation where I would love to just chat with a ref after a game and have them admit like, yeah, I fucked that one up or I missed yeah. that one. You know, it's like just hearing it sometimes is validating because you're like, all right, I'm not nuts. Like, you know, and even the ones where they call you and bag you for two minutes and you're like, that's a shit call. If they can look at the tape after and be like, oh, that was a shit call. That would be nice to hear. But you just touched on something I'm always curious about. I, I do love the kind of earn your stripes, no pun intended, uh, no pun intended vibe in the NHL and that. As you get deeper into the league, refs will let you talk a little bit more. But you, you're in year three here. You don't think you've got it yet. You, they're still shutting you down. Yeah, like I get some of the lines been giving me the time of day, but none of the refs really want anything to do with me. I think I took yeah. well, I took a penalty on the power play a couple games ago, and I didn't like the call, and so I was kind of giving it. I feel really bad because I think the guy's name was Kyle. And I was yelling Kevin at him. And I was like, why is Kevin not answering me? I was screaming Kevin, like, what the, whatever, going at him. 
And I get back to the bench and I was like, Kevin won't talk to me. And I was sitting next to Aho and he goes, his name's not Kevin. Like we have the tape on the boards. His name's Kyle. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, that I feel terrible. I get why no one wants to talk to me out there anymore. <laughs> Yeah, ultimate disrespect. Yeah, like he, he, think, he thinks Seth's chirping him. He's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, like this fucking young kid doesn't even know my name. Insane. <laughs> Dude, and what do you think about – Um, when was this? It was a couple years ago, I think, maybe two seasons ago. But the – um, because the refs are m- hot mic now sometimes, you know? And there was that clip of a ref being l- kind of like, yo, I owed this team a call. Do you feel like – I don't want to get you in trouble or anything, but do you feel like that happens over the course of a game? Like, oh, if, we, if we've had three power plays and they've had none, you're like, yo, careful with the sticks, boys. We're obviously taking one soon. Does it feel like that happens? Yeah, that that definitely goes on the bench. Like, people talk about that, especially if you've gotten maybe a weak one. You know that Yeah, right. You're going to sur- even that up. Yeah, surfing for one a little bit. So it's tough because you know they're not intentionally trying to call it, but that you know that a weak one might – get thrown your way yeah and i'm kind of fine with that honestly do you what do you think do you yeah like it's it's part of the game for me and i think it's cool i think it's cool that you know that the refs are probably thinking about it and then you guys are thinking about it too it's just another added mental element of the game that that makes you you know play a little safer play a little tighter yeah exactly and i'm sure they they're tired of getting screamed at by the coaches they want to maybe hand them one so they can shut up a little bit and and you yeah Yeah. (laughs) shut the fuck up yeah (laughs) So you you mentioned to us earlier, I don't know if we, we had it while we were recording yet, but you're hanging in Edmonton right now. You guys are on a six game, 12 day road trip. And I think something that's interesting, you know, a lot of fans and not even casual fans, just like sometimes fans don't look at the schedule and realize how much of a grind that can be. And you're obviously going out here. You guys are sitting in a good spot in the Met, but I think you, you all want to be doing a little bit better. Everyone wants to be a little bit better. So how do you guys stay you know, focused, but at the same time, relaxed when you are away from home for two weeks, game every other day, what are the things that you do, you know, on the ice and off the ice to just kind of stay in your own head, chill out, stay focused and locked in? Cause that balance is difficult. Yeah, it is. I mean, like we, we practice today. So I, that kind of gets like the, your energy out and the focus and it gives you time to kill a little bit. And then spending time at dinners, really. Like you're mm-hmm. on the road, so you get to hang out with the guys at home. You don't get to as much. Everyone has families. I got nothing going on, so this is basically just every day. So yeah. I get to I get to see the guys that have families more often, which is fun. But yeah, like you said, we're not we're not where we want to be. So it's it's a nice it's a nice balance to sometimes get a little break and get on the road. And when you change cities, it seems like a little change of scenery. So we lost in Winnipeg last night, but it feels like a new kind of day, new kind of start being here in Edmonton. So that's, that's actually a cool perspective is that sometimes you feel like the road trips are nice because it's a nice change of pace and lets you reset, sort of just be with the boys that, that, that helps every now and then. Yeah, for sure. I think it, I think that's the biggest thing is being, being around the guys and building chemistry. But yeah, I mean, I definitely have a different take than a lot of the guys with families and kids back yeah. home that they probably want to see. Yeah. So are, are you an alone time guy or do you like when you're on the road, are you like, I want to be around the boys as much as possible? Yeah, I like being around the guys. I get bored because I just talk a lot. So I want people to talk to and to hang out with. And being alone, it can get, yeah, boring. So I like to be around guys, but I think guys sometimes get a little sick of me and and, <laughs> and want, a, <laughs> want, a little, want a little tolerance break from me. But uh, I'm still getting invited to dinner, so I'm uh, I'm not totally kicked out yet. There you go. Dude, I'm the same way. I, I, especially, I remember the road trips. I would lose my fucking mind, yeah. and I'm like alone in the room. And I'm like, yeah. is anyone up? Anyone want to <laughs> play video games or something yeah. are you are you guys doing uh the credit card roulette at dinner or no yeah we got uh, we got this uh crocodile roulette game where you press the teeth and one closes and you lose we got uh like the card game with the bill yep we got a, we got a few few in rotation but uh i'm a huge fan of the croco roulette i think it's fun and childish and everyone all like the waitresses and waiters or whatever when they come by and see us playing this think we're just the biggest idiots in the world because we're going nuts over this yeah and it's just like a little cro- little toy crocodile we're we're playing with so yeah my question was who's in charge of bringing the croc to dinner every time because <laughs> that's fucking yeah, it's, on the, it's, on the phone. In it's an app there's like oh, okay oh, okay because yeah that thing was like a game. I remember Dude, when I was, I was, I, I was like, how yeah. does someone still have that? That was like an actual game. That's like a toy crocodile that you like press your finger on the teeth. And I was yeah. like, are we bringing that into the restaurant? <laughs> so it's an app now. You can download this and you guys all rip it at dinner. Exactly. Yeah. Exact same game, just on the phone. 
Okay, that's All sick. Right. We got to get that. Yeah, I agree. That's and then fire. and then Dan was talking about vids. Like after dinner, is there a crew that's kind of staying up and playing cards because because you're not the Family Guys, or is everyone just kind of like, all right, off to bed? A little bit of both. I I don't play cards really, so I'm in there just to hang out. But uh, usually on longer road trips, there's guys that are going there to play poker or whatnot, or go see the city a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit of mix. Yeah. Who's who's your uh, who's the Familyless, you know, wingman that you got on the team right now. You guys got to stick together. I know we got we got a decent group. It's uh, me, Kokniemi, Svechnikov, Neches. Um, that's kind of the four young guys that uh, we all kind of have the same interests. So whether it's shopping or or whatnot, we're all kind of hanging around. That's huge. That's big. Huge yeah. to have a crew. Yeah. Well, dude, listen. If you ever, I mean, if you're ever stuck alone in your room, and you need someone to just shoot some memes back and forth with. I got you. <laughs> Perfect. Shoot me a text. <laughs> could, could use a laugh. Yeah. Uh, all right. I want to talk about the Met real quick because at least for us, that has been the biggest surprise division so far. There's been crazy. surprises everywhere for sure, but the Met's been pretty crazy. You look at the Rangers, scorching hot, obviously, but I think everyone expected them to be good. You guys are, I'm sure, close to where you want. You want it to be a little bit stronger or start, but like, you know, you're in second place. You're sitting, you're sitting all right. But then it's like, you know, capitals flyers islanders penguins devils you know yeah. so my question is obviously you can only control what you can control but is part of you standings watching a little bit like yo we need to build up as much lead as possible before the fucking devils wake up or are you like nope out of sight out of mind i don't care win our games i don't give a shit who's where yeah i think we're we're more focused on ourselves right now we uh we got some stuff to figure out so i think a lot of the attention's internal but yeah, you can't ignore what's going on in our division and how tight everything is. It's it's crazy how much can change in one or two games and and how everything can flip. So we're uh, we're focused on ourselves, but you always got to keep kind of a little bit of an eye on on what's going on with other teams. Does that include the Rangers' hot start? Like, is there any part of that frustrating where you're like, Jesus, they want a fucking another game, or is it like, nope, whatever, dude, we'll be fine. It'll all sort itself out. Yeah, I mean. A little bit, like you, you, yeah. you expect them to be good. You you expect them to win most nights, but uh, it does get a little frustrating when you, you keep seeing them piling on wins and and we're kind of uh, bouncing back and forth. But I mean, we we're just trying to win as many as we can, so we can kind of take control and put it in our own own hands. Do you feel like in inside the division, you have rivalries that sort of change and fluctuate every year, or, or do you feel like you you know being being at the club for three years now? you identify who your number one rival is, no question about it. Yeah, I think you, you have like the, the Rangers are a big one for us, uh, the Devils too. And then I'm sure for guys who've been here a little bit longer, they have some more uh, more angst against other teams. I've, yeah. I just like play the Rangers in playoffs. They eliminated us my first year. We kind of run into them, run into a little bit of trouble every time we go to MSG. So they're, they're a team for me that I see as a rival. Uh, but yeah, I'm every team in the Metro, you can definitely either pick some players that you don't like or, or just the team in general that uh, you want to, you want to dominate a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. must be funny kind of being younger where every team on the Met has just been in like the Sid OV torture chamber for <laughs> years. And, but no, you're kind of like, what? Fuck them, dude. They suck. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so that's like i don't give a fuck about crosby yeah what are you don't really make the playoffs dude yeah <laughs> yeah uh so we talked a little bit about this year and you know it's your first year you make the big club you guys go to the second round have an epic seven game series last year you go to the eastern conference finals you're obviously off to an unreal start this year you know personally like you said though you guys are always wanting to be better and better and better we've we've talked to some people who kind of run into that situation where you get into the league and you know, you win immediately. You have success immediately, whether it's going all the way or getting a deep playoff run. And there's some people who feel like they kind of run into that situation where you almost get, you, you take it for granted. You're like, yeah, I know we, we made it to the second round and then third round. And that's just what I expect. Is that something that you feel like you need to combat all the time uh, of just saying to yourself, it's like, no, it's not guaranteed. We got to stay focused. We got to lock in at all times. How do you deal with that? Yeah, I, it's. It, I think ours is a little unique because, like, yeah, like you said, I came in to a really good, like, a contender team. Came in yeah. and, and we're in playoffs pretty easily both years and and made runs. But um, the Canes weren't very good not too long ago. Yeah, and so we have a lot of guys on the team that were 
through those kind of dark years when there wasn't anyone in the building, you're losing a lot. And so they, they remind everybody what it was yeah. like and, and what it was like, I think it was like five years ago when they, when they first started, uh, started to get a little traction. But, uh, so it's not hard when you have guys like that who've been through it and, and remind you that it's not, uh, it's not too easy to, to make playoffs and, and go on a run. That's actually really cool to hear veteran perspective of being like, Hey, dude, we weren't always good. Right. Yeah, Especially for the young totally. guys. I love that. Do you feel any, cause obviously with the success you've had recently comes pressure, right? You know, expectations got, got to go all the way, got to pull it off. Do you feel any pressure to be great for those older guys that kind of went through it, went through hell to get here? You know, does that, I'm in not, I'm saying it ruins your game. I'm just saying like, is that in the back of your mind too? Like, God, we got to pull this off for these boys. 1000%. I, uh, it's, it was tough. I think last year was the first, cause the first year I kind of was just like, Oh my God, I'm in the NHL, just kind of yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And last year, like we had Stas, Stas on our team, Stepper on our team, like Burnsy, like all these guys that have been around forever and haven't got to the Stanley Cup or won. So it was like when we got eliminated, I, it hurt me more that I couldn't win with them and yeah. see those guys win more than it hurt me getting eliminated. And it's stupid because like I might not make the playoffs ever again. I might not make a good run, but, uh, just knowing how long those guys have been in the league and what they did for me, like Burnsy feeds me almost every home game the night before. Yeah, yeah. Step like Stepper was probably the most influential guy I've had in my career so far, just in terms of making me comfortable with the team and then just showing me the ins and outs of the game. And same with Stas. So when we lost, it uh, it hurt a ton, but it hurt a lot for other guys than it did for myself i think for sure did you live with any of the vets when you first came up no uh, i i lived with aho fishy a, a bit yeah 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 which was which was fun it was it was it built a lot of chemistry and built a lot of a uh, really good he's one of my best friends now so it's yeah it was, it was a good little kickstart but uh he i got pushed out of that house right away <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I heard, I heard you were fucking pretty punctual and tidy when with him. I know you're not in life, but like, I heard you've stepped up when you were living with him. I, well, yeah, I was panicked. Cause like I was probably on the, I was probably like my fourth kind of month. I think it was in January, December. And, um, so I was still like, he would be like, okay, we're going to leave at nine 15 for practice. I'm sitting by the front door at nine 10. Like this is our star player. I'm not yeah. making him late and making him wait for me at all been up so since I, 6 a.m dude yeah exactly i'm like i'm ready to go for anything uh whatever he wanted to do i was i was right there to tag along and then now a little bit different it's, uh, it's a <laughs> different kind of story now me and him uh i like to give him a lot of a lot of shit but uh he's he's fun yeah amazing do you feel like you're kind of easing your way into more of that veteran group or do you still kind of have the mindset of you're one of the newer guys on the team and you're just making sure you get out there do your job every day I think I kind of kicked the door in on the veteran group. I think they kind of, I just kind of like welcomed myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't really like process all oh, these guys are like fair amount older than me. And like, I obviously show them respect and, and whatnot cause they've earned it, but there's no chance I'm letting anyone go by not getting chirped or not, not getting my two cents in on, on what they want. So like guys like Jordor never safe, like he sits two lockers from me in the dress room and I'm in his ear all the time. And, and same with some of the older guys. So I think they like it. I think they appreciate that. I just have like a, a blind kind of dumb confidence that I can just kind of go in there and, and uh, just kind of shoot it with them. But um, I definitely got to make sure I'm a little more careful on, on what I do and don't piss them off. Yeah. Especially, I like especially with Rod. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like it though, dude. All the boys on the team, every time you try to find a quote from one of the guys in the team about you to a reporter, they're like, um, PG 13, I can't really answer this. So <laughs> yeah. I think you got some good antics going on. Dude. Well, this like is it. the platform to do it. What are some of your best antics in the locker room? Oh, well, going on the rod thing, um, my first year, uh, playoffs. So I drive like a Volkswagen Tiguan, like a, it's just beaten, it's got dents, hit broken windshield whatever it's not a great car i put it through hell but my first year playoffs <laughs> i drove i don't know if you guys know what a dodge hellcat is oh yeah oh hell yeah wicked power just it's like a race car kind of 
And so I got to drive one for the playoffs and I was abusing this thing. And so one of my first days with it, we're playing, I think we played Boston the first round that year. It's like the day before game one, I'm leaving practice and I'm doing a, uh, I'm with um, maybe, I don't know who I was with at the time, but they wanted me to see, want to see me do burnouts in the parking lot in the team parking lot. And so like we park in this little area and then we have like a stretch of probably like maybe 60 yards of like straight before you have to turn. And I'm doing, I'm spinning the tires, making smoke, revving the engine, flying up and down, like, and Rod walks out right behind <laughs> me, walks me doing burnouts in the parking lot. Day before the playoffs. Day yes. before the playoffs. Right. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what are you doing? And so he looks disappointed. I just flew away, whatever. Didn't think anything of it. He gives me the lineup card for game three. And he goes, we're going to give it to Louis Hamilton to read the starting lineup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sitting, I'm like, and I'm like, this is fucking, this is awful. But it's, oh. uh, yeah, a lot of stuff not using. Hey, that. that was high praise, dude. Seven it time is, world champ, I, dude. Yeah. My driving skills, I think. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the, like the, that, that stern upset look might've actually him, been, him being like, Jesus Christ, this kid is a weapon behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh. love it. Uh, all right. So dude, you're in year three right now. And um, I, I actually read another really cool uh, interview you did with the athletic that was at the beginning of last season. So going into your second year where it was talking about that sophomore slump, right? Cause there was, there's guys in your locker room, Stalzy, even your coach that had like monster first years, slower second years. And I think at the time you had like <clears throat> two tucks in your first three games. So they were like, he's doing it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then you look at your production year two, and that some of the totals are down, but I have two questions. The first question though, is tell us why it doesn't feel like a sophomore slump at all to you. Cause even though the points are down so many other areas of your game improved. So, so tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. I, it's kind of crazy. Like it was a slump point wise, but I think my overall game got so much better and took so many big steps throughout the year that I couldn't be mad at what happened. Uh, I just like my defensive game went from someone who's a pretty big li liability at some times <laughs> to uh, someone who's pretty competent. And he started trusting me in, in different situations and, and times when we had one goal leads and he'd put me out there. So uh, just being able to do that felt great. And then being able to trust me against other teams, top lines, like you wouldn't have to pull me off when Carlos became on the ice anymore or whatnot. So it was, it was nice that way, but yeah, the, uh, the point totals, uh, it took a little bit of a dip, but still that other stuff is so valuable for the I casual agree. fan, right? The non-fantasy hockey player. It's like, dude, the, those things get you more ice time, which will allow you to be out there more and be, get more confident and be more productive for the rest of your career. And just look at what we talked about today. You're in, you know, you're taking D zone draws on the PK. Now it's like, that is such a huge testament to the way that your game has grown and the confidence that you have. And we're not going to sewer anyone, but there's plenty of guys in the league that we can think of right now who are struggling in that defensive end. And if you don't fix that, you're not going to go much longer. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's a huge leap. And it's great for fans and, and, you know, just people who love the game to hear that side of it. It's unbelievable. And, dude, let's talk about it. I mean, the points this year. Fuck yeah. Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> First, how how demoralizing is it like year one when you're out there and Sid jumps on and you just hear your name getting yelled from the bench and you're like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I know. It's awful. There was, uh, <laughs> there was one game. We had like a one or one or two goal lead. There's like five minutes left. In the, I think it was a two goal lead. We were five minutes left in the third. And he puts us out there and they pull their goalie. And I'm like, we do like a one, one, three. So I'm on the right side. So right by the bench. Yeah. <laughs> and all I hear is, Jarvie, get off the ice. Get off the ice. Jarvie is screaming at me to get on, to come back. And it was, that one hurt. That one yeah, hurt. Oh my God so damn I, it. I don't know what I'm doing. Like I could be out here. Oh, yeah. But that is, I got to like, maybe get an empty net or dude, get a free one, I you know, like, like cookie, but no, I, I dove head first in the bench and got off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a truly like tuck and roll over the place. Yeah. Okay. But uh, then, yeah, part two of my question was going to be your scorching right now, but nine and 10 already second high, second highest point total on the team. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what went into it in the off season and what's changed for you this year? Is it the intermittent fasting just firing or what's the deal? <laughs> Everyone loves that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that has something to do with it, but I, I feel better physically. I think I got, I got a lot stronger over the season and then just confidence. I think um, it took a little bit of time. I think going through that slump point wise, obviously it's never, never good for you, for you confidence wise. 
And so just rebuilding my game, I think I, I added different kind of aspects of it that, uh, that maybe helped me out. And then just being able to trust myself. I like, I've been a score in every league I've came into. So the NHL obviously is the best one, but it's just about adjusting to, to the teams and, and the new league every year. And uh, right now it's working. Yeah. Are you going to, are you going to be mad? Can I say on record that you're going to be mad if you don't get 30 this year? Well, this is, I got to run on pace, dude. Right. Yeah. Say yes. <laughs> say yes. I mean, yeah, like I, I would love to. It'd be sweet, but uh, I got a running joke with our head trainer that uh, we always said road to fifty, and yeah, just, fuck yeah, we're, we're just shits and giggles, and like even in playoffs last year, like we're going fifty tucks in playoffs, like yeah. we're gonna, like, shatter the record, or the record's like eighteen or whatever, shatter. Yeah. yeah. And so we have this running joke about it, and every time I score, I kind of come off the ice and kind of like look back at him, and he <laughs> he just gives me so he'll just say something stupid to me or whatever, but. Yeah, I mean, 30 tucks would be sweet. I think anything to help the team. Uh, yeah, 50 and, even sweeter, though. I'm rooting yeah, for that. I, I agree. 50, 50, you might not hear from me. I might go off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to put you on blast for a second here oh, because gosh. you are two points away from 100 in your career. And first of all, amazing. And you, you're it, when you pull it off, you'll be only the fifth person in your draft class to have done it, which is an unbelievable accolade. But I'm putting you on blast here because you're going to have to show up to the money board. And I now can't wait for this to be public. So the boys on the team know that you better fucking empty the wallet for that yeah. one. <laughs> I know. I was, I was kind of hoping to do it in Winnipeg. That would have been cool. To do I know, it. dude. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm scared. They're going to just hound me for it. Yeah. I mean, hundred like that's huge. Boys, but. I don't know how much, how much has to go, how much has to go up there from you or maybe for context. Cause Bernsey just did the 600 assists. Right. So like how much is, how much is getting tossed around? Yeah. Bernsey doesn't count because Bernsey hates to put money up for, for the fellas. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's, does he really, that's yeah, he's bullshit. Not, he's a, uh, he doesn't get to, he doesn't count. So, I mean, you got to think probably, probably a thousand, I think yeah. just yep. basically take away my game check and play. For right. <laughs> Just do it. Make sure you get the hundredth on a on a sick tuck at least, because then the thousand will feel less bad if it's a secondary assist and you lose a thousand bucks. It kind of sucks. Exactly. I'm feeling it, dude. It's gonna he's gonna get the netters bump here, and he's yeah. gonna do it in Edmonton. It's gonna be fucking unbelievable. Oh, that'd be perfect. It's got it's happening this road trip. I promise you that. So. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, Seth, we're gonna do um a game we play with everybody to get you out of here. Um. It's called pass, shoot, score. It's just a ranking system, okay? So we're going to give you a couple categories, and we'll give you three things in that category, and then you rank them. Passing is our third favorite because the secondary is this cool, but it ain't that cool. Yeah. Shoot is your second favorite because we got to get pucks on net. And then score is your favorite because lighting the lamp is the coolest thing you can do. Gotcha. Got it? Gotcha. Okay. It's basically fuck Mary kill. Yeah. yeah. I was going to – I got that. Got that yeah. vibe off there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your first category – is called teammates all right all right pass shoot score playing ping pong with fishy eating kk's tacos or hitting the sauna with bernsey oh that's a good one <laughs> Jeez, i'm gonna pass the tacos with kk because Half the time the meat's undercooked. He's really. I thought that was his specialty, dude. I did too. It was good for a while, and then <laughs> well, the thing that did it for me, we were making it uh, probably a couple weeks ago, and he's like really particular on how you cut cucumbers for whatever reason. <laughs> okay, I'm cutting cucumbers, cutting them how a normal person would cut cucumbers, <laughs> and he turns back, starts yelling at me as I'm cutting. So I start yelling back and lose focus and like cut oh. off a chunk of my thumb with the <sighs> knife, and so. Okay. Yeah, Fucking really for me. I'm pretty sure he ate the chunk of my thumb in his little taco. <laughs> yeah, so. You snuck that in the taco. Yeah, threw that in How's this? Taco, but well, the good news bad. is he undercooks the meat, so he couldn't even tell. Yeah, so exactly. it's fine. It's chewy regardless. <laughs> um, How does he want you to cut them though? You're slicing them like you're making hockey pucks on the cubes yeah, I'm or what? Little circles, which I mean, maybe it's not great for tacos, but like it's not the end of the world. Yeah. What did he want? Strips? He wanted cubes. Little yeah, cubes. quartered up. Yep. Uh, yeah. I was not doing that for him. Yep. No. Uh, Easy pass. Easy pass. And then probably shoot with fishy and ping pong because he dominates me every time we play ping pong. He won't let me hear the end of it. We usually play for lunch and yeah. he, I just lose every time. 
And then, yeah, Sano. Sano looks <laughs> he's always fun. He's got stories. Uh, oh, yeah. He must have stories. And, and, and he's, a, he's a big cook, too. You said earlier, you know, he's feeding you all the time. Yeah. What's and, and I think most of our listeners probably know, but Bernsey's like fucking shooting elk and yeah, cooking he, crazy shit. So, like, what is the... That man is living off the What's land. the craziest thing you've had to eat at his, at his for dinner? Uh, I think just, like, he brings, like, every dinner, it's, like, seven different types of, like steak and meat like we have deer elk like you said like a bunch of different stuff but uh yeah i think i had deer for the first time at his place and uh, not bad yeah it's okay yeah, it's okay it's- that's that's not horrible i thought he was gonna make you eat something insane but but no no he he's all right pretty tame for me i gotta i'm a picky eater so i uh i would let him know if i'm not eating it yeah. what's the pickiest thing about your eating vegetables you don't eat vegetables <laughs> no i do i eat a little <laughs> It's, uh, it's usually pretty reluctant. Yeah, yeah. Like you look at it very skeptically. You're like, what the fuck is this? I don't want Yeah, this I just need something to complain about. So I'll take a bite and then just say they're the worst thing in the world. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at least he's putting cukes on tacos. Yeah, yeah it's nice. <laughs> I got to say, cukes on tacos is a weird move. Agree. Exactly. That's like what we does that. <laughs> it's like we kind of breezed right by that, yeah. but like that is a weird move. That yeah. is not a taco top. Yeah. I don't like this That's at all. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, it's better than juice. I don't know if you saw that, but Kempi on the Kings is putting bananas on tacos. And I thought that was the fucking craziest Ooh, thing I've ever that heard. Is, yeah. No. Absolutely bizarre. All right. Your next pass shoot score. These are things that bring you joy. So wearing cutoff t-shirts, <laughs> taking naps and eating nerds clusters. Oh, dude, this is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like I got stronger, so like I look better in a cutoff than I did. Before. I know, dude. I looked like a wet noodle before. Now I look a little bit better. Yeah, but I think we'll, I think we'll pass that one. Probably, I, I wear like a Harvard alumni now. I know, <laughs> and so the boys love that one. But yeah, we'll pass on that. And then we'll probably shoot the gummy clusters. Probably shouldn't be eating as many as I do. But God, they're fucking so good though, dude. dude oh, you guys man. are nuts. Those things are like every bite is a new cavity. Oh, you're in, well, probably true, but they are. I just do not Jarvie. I hadn't even had, I didn't even heard of those till like a year ago. Somehow I just found out about nerd clusters and now I'm just like, Oh dude, all day. What, do you fuck with nerds rope or is it just cluster? I had the rope. Actually, for the first time a couple months ago, it's bad, but I think the, the clusters, like, I just, like, I can't stop eating them, so. Yeah, easier to manage. Dude. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I do hear it's more of, like, a pop, you know. All right. Okay, so we're, we're scoring the naps. We'll score the naps. I, I can't pass up a nap. Are you still napping just as much as often? Yeah. Or, as usual? It's just weird at this point. I'm just, just weird times. Guys are trying to text me to do stuff. I'm just asleep. I'm napping. How? What, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Do you do like, would you say you have a normal sleep schedule? Do you sleep normally through the night or are you like taking micro naps out here? Like Aristotle? I, I have trouble doing everything. I can't, I don't really sleep at night. I, before I started napping, I couldn't sleep at night regardless. So I just thought may as well sleep during the day a little bit. Yeah. Bank a couple hours. Yeah, exactly. Get a couple <laughs> in the bank and then go for whatever. But I mean, I think it pisses the guys off more than anything just because, like, it'll be, like, 3.34, and they'll try to text me to do something, like, see if I want to go to dinner, and I'm just asleep, and then I'll ask them at 7, and they're like, why? Like, why are you doing this to yourself? But, uh, I mean, I, don't, I like it. Yeah. Naps are fucking great. The, oh, do, how, do you fall asleep quickly when you're napping? Like, do you have that ability? Like, you're taking a nap, and you're just gone? Yeah. Like, when I lived with Aho, we would try to watch movies, yeah. and- Bye. <laughs> Most like fifteen minutes max, I would be sleeping every time. God damn it's it! It's a that, skill, dude. No, that <laughs> pisses me off so much. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to show someone a movie. I'm, I'm like, Jarvie, yeah. this movie's sick. You're gonna love it. And I look over fifteen minutes in, and he's just snoring. That, yeah, exactly. that kills me inside, <laughs> dude. Also, did you know, or was it funny? I guess maybe is a better way to say it. When you had that nap quote that went so viral on TikTok, like, did you, <laughs> what, what was your phone blowing up after that? Yeah, I just got called an idiot for like, <laughs> like I, I set myself up a little bit for it because like that was I think when I said that I was kind of like in the middle of a slump in my yeah. second year. And so my DMs were flooded with always oh, napping on the ice. Oh, he's always napping, stuff like that. And so I was just getting just berated by these keyboard warriors, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's hilarious. So 
Yeah. The napping on the ice is a chirp that writes itself. Yeah. After that. Walked right yeah, into that's it. That's fucking tough. <laughs> Walked right into it. Um, okay. Well, actually, before I give you your next one, what, what other, give me your top three candy besides nerd cluster. Ooh, I like, I like caramel M&Ms. Wow. Nice answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sir, that's cla- That's fucking classy stuff. <laughs> I like, I like a good Twix bar. Fuck yeah. Same. And I, I like the Skittles gummies actually. Oh, sick dude. Yeah. Nice. Wait, like, yeah, they make them. They, uh, or wait, do you just mean regular Skittles? Like, cause they're kind of gummy. Yeah. Okay. They make like a softer one now. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Like a um, Skittles makes like a gummy bear type of gummy. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'll get in on that. I like it. Okay. Here, here's your next category, Jarvie. This category is meaningful moments. Okay. Pass shoot score. Your first NHL Hattie with your dad and brother in the building. Buying your mom a car after you got your first contract. Or getting your run where angels fear to tread tattoo this year. True. Jeez. Um, that's impossible, man. That you're gonna kill somebody, dude. This is a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I th- I think I'll. Oh, oof. I mean, like the hat trick's probably my favorite on ice moment I've had. But like, I think I gotta pass it. Yeah, that's tough. it's a loaded category, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was crazy. I've never my like my brother was like kind of tearing up a little bit. My, yeah. my dad was. I've I've never got. He's not a huge hugger. But like, I got a massive bear hug after that. Wow! Oh, that's wow. huge. It <laughs> that's huge. Ton, it meant a ton to me, and yeah. So that one, yeah, I'll, I'll pass that one. Um, buying my mom the car uh, was really cool. I, she drove this just absolute beater of a van. <laughs> like the door behind the driver's seat wouldn't shut, so yeah. if you drove it, you had to hold it closed while you, like you drive. <laughs> And like I used to drive that when I was like 16, like around with my buddies. I'm like, I would have one of them sit back. Like if it was just two of us, he's sitting yeah, behind. He's in the back. Yeah. So we, it was <laughs> that one. It was like really nice. And like we're in Winnipeg. So it's cold. She had no heat. Yeah. So that it changed, it changed her life for a, a good while and, and meant a lot to her. And then, yeah, the tattoo. I mean, I, it's, it's something that it's incredible, it, dude. It means so much to me. And my the game in Winnipeg was probably the first game I've ever had where he my grandpa wasn't able to be there. Oh wow, right. And so it it like part of me it sucked a lot, but I mean having him on my shoulder now forever, it uh it's the most important thing I think I've done. Uh maybe in my life. I it, it means a lot to me, it means a lot to my family, and uh I'm just really glad I did it. Dude, yeah. amazing. Can you can you t- expand on that for us? Like, tell us about what it was like and how much he meant to you growing up and as a player, you know, made you the man yeah. you are. It was it was crazy. He was uh, he, he, he was awesome. He was someone that whenever he could coach me, he would coach me. And he he was one of those, like, he's an older, he was an older dude. So he was one of those tough, like, feet and cross checks. Like, yeah. he was smaller. So he had that kind of little man syndrome where he hated getting pushed around, kind of like me. So he was, he was just someone that I knew no matter what he was going to be there for me, no mm. matter how bad it was, no matter what was going on, he was going to be in my corner and be there to support me. And like, I remember when, uh, when we made the NHL, he would, he would just call me sometimes just to like, be like you're playing tomorrow, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to record it. Make sure I don't miss it. And it's just like little stuff like that. Just, it meant the world to me. And then when he uh when he left it uh left a pretty big hole but uh mm-hmm. something that uh it brought our family closer together i think now me and my me and my brother and my uncle are are closer than we've ever been and uh, a lot of that has to do with him that's unreal yeah. dude Beautiful. you love to hear that and i you know i have to mention quickly you so you you buy your mom the car what kind of car was oh yeah it? <laughs> it was uh she wanted a a little honda crv so a little suv but the uh, only, thing, only thing she wanted was heated seats, heating steering wheel, and a backup camera. So beautiful, easy, yeah. dude. And then done. I, it's it's a pretty classy move that you buy mum the car and you're still ripping around in the Tiguan. Like that's that right there is a selfless act. That's gonna earn you some points. 
I thought so. I, I bought my dad a truck this summer too, so just taking care of them. But this Tiguan's got to go eventually. This thing's yeah, got to. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that was the next question is when do we upgrade that thing? Guy's got a busted car and a busted phone, That's dude. The, I'm dude, like, <laughs> what, what, what are we doing When here? we get 30. There you go. Yeah. Get, get 30 exactly. and the Tiguan's gone. Get 30, I can get rid of the Tiguan. Okay. Uh, now here are your last one, Jarvie. This one is most annoying things. So the score on this is going to be the most annoying. All right. So here they are. Losing to Caden at golf. <laughs> Getting chirped about your teeth. Oh. <laughs> or going to Howden's cup party. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're going to pass pass the teeth one, I think. Okay. Like I've been hearing it since I was like 14. Yep. And the st- the only thing that annoys me about it is I don't have like anything to say back. Like like you like anytime someone says to me, I just go, I just kind of <laughs> so like I I can't come up with a thing to say back. But yeah, I mean I'm used to. I know my teeth are bad. It's not like I've been trying. Hey, to you're put you're putting them on the line, dude. You're getting your face Seriously. mashed in, blocking shots, bro. Like that that's commendable. I'm just surprised they haven't fallen out yet, which is yeah, like, kind of happy and mad about. But uh, <laughs> that that is the beauty, though. It's like when they do get knocked out and you lose all your jibs you get them fixed yeah you're there gonna you come go. back better exactly but i'm doing this invisalign stuff right now so i'm trying to get straight i'm trying to do oh there you, for go. you dude hell yeah that's dude. great oh thanks that's yeah, great <laughs> uh, um but i have this weird feeling that i'm finally gonna get like pretty straight teeth yeah gone, gone. and yeah. i'm going to lose my mind yeah <laughs> so, that is gonna suck dude. oh i'm gonna be so mad but uh, yeah, and then losing my brother in golf is probably the the shoot. I mean, he doesn't really beat me anymore. He oh, used- are you Ooh, sure, okay. dude? I I heard he's pretty good. He's all right. He's all right. If I'm on my game, I dominate him every time. But wow, he's uh yeah, he he can't take the chirps as well as I can. So when I win, I like to rub it in a little bit more, and he gets a little. Yeah, you're in his head by the third yeah, hole. That's how you're winning. Yeah, it's a yeah. mental game then. Exactly. And then yeah, Howden's Cup party drove me absolutely bonkers. Fuck. Oh, like I think like the only way I could get like I had to get drunk. That was the only way I could get through it. I, yeah. Like the thing that made me the most mad was my brother was there, and he was face deep in the cup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was like he won. I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. Like, I looked over at him at one point. Like he had like beer down his shirt. Yeah. I was like, like let's <laughs> come on. Like I couldn't even imagine now if I won the cup what he would do because he like. That's his friend, and he just did that. But. Yeah, dude, he won't even care about yours. He's like, I already did yeah. this, dude. He's already, he already lifted it over his head. He's good. <laughs> that thing was all over all his social media for the last next like, <laughs> that bastard, dude. Yeah, so yeah. we we were with the boys the night they won the cup in Vegas, and it was an absolute rip. So I've got to imagine the party was just insufferable from your end. That said, how like talk about your relationship with Howdy. How do you know him? When did that? You know, when did you guys become boys? Yeah. Uh, over the last couple of years, like we've skated together for a few summers now, but, uh, as, as I've gotten more comfortable and kind of came out of my shell, we've, we've started to really bond and, and have a really good friendship now. So me and him, uh, we like to go at it on the ice a little bit. We're never, never kind of on the same team. So it's always fun going against them. But that, uh, when he won that cup, I'm um, like for the, like he, whatever, didn't come to the gym for maybe a month, started showing up and f- probably the first thing he did was grab a 35 pound dumbbell go like this and go, you know what else weighs 35 pounds? And <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, fucking, dude. Son of a bitch. Just throw a plate at him. <laughs> that is so fucking mean. I yeah. can't believe that. <laughs> oh, I love it though. You got to do it. I would have done it uh, too. It was so funny. It, it, that was like, he just, every time I would chirp him, he would come back with something to do with the Stanley Cup, which I mean, fair enough, but yeah. he's, he's got to pray to God I don't win one because he's going to. Oh, dude, him. it's all over. For yeah. Him. You get that reverse Uno card and it's all oh, over for him. It's going to go crazy. There you go. All right. Well, Jarvi, this has been unbelievable. You're the fucking best for coming on. Before we let you go, is there anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to plug? I got nothing going on. No, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> quest, to, quest to fifty goals continues. Yeah, tomorrow. the road, road yeah. to fifty is a yeah. it's a little bit of a stall, but we'll we'll get back. Yeah, road to fifty. Road to fifty <laughs> is what we're doing. Um, all right, man. Well, we're gonna be tuning in big time when you uh d up against Edmonton here because I got a feeling that that hundred coming is coming. But um, again, my man, thank you so much. This was a blast. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Huge shout out and thanks to Seth Jarvis. Like we said, just what a guy. 
I'm so glad we got to chill with him. I know. He's the that best. was just tremendous. Just the um, best. He's, he's going to have a big year. Oh, yeah. He's going to have a big career. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> Let's kick it to overtime here with our last closing segments. Let's get into hottest teams of the week. You want to start or me? Mm, I'll start. Okay. Uh, you start. I'm going to start. We talked about them at the top of the episode. The Minnesota Wild. There you go, Minnesota. First time being in the hottest teams of the week, I believe. They are 3-0 and with their new coach, Bump. You'll love to see it. Beat the Blues 3-1, the Preds 6-1, and the Hawks 4-1. This could be the turnaround that Minnesota's been looking for. We hope so. And so does the second hottest team this week. Mm. The Edmonton Oilers. Another new coach bump. The Oilers have won four in a row. They shut out the Caps 5-0, which is a solid win. Pumped the Ducks. Beat Vegas 5-4 in a shootout, which is a great win. And beat the Jets 3-1, which is also a pretty great win, I might add. Um, said it a million times. Don't let them get hot. They, Do not. They, they can go scorched earth. Would be a huge mistake. Yep. And the hottest team of the week, you know I love them, the Desert Dogs. Oh, oh, oh the Yotes, dude. Wow. The Yotes are on a four-game heater in impressive fashion. They shut out Vegas 2-0 in Vegas. Yeah, huge. Beat Tampa 3-1, beat the Avs 4-3 in OT, and stomped on the Blues 4-1. They are no joke at 12-9-2. They're playing tonight uh, against the Caps. Let's see if they can make it five. They're sick, dude. I love the Yotes. Dan. Top watch. Hit me with some top watch. Top watch. Top has 12 goals, 9 assists for 21 points in 22 games. He's right where we want him to be. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Was on a five-point in three-game run before their embarrassing loss to the shot. Which was brutal. <laughs> but top is money. We had him at 79 points. He's right on pace. Yep. I love it. Uh, so, now to the Friends of the Pod segment. Yes. Morsey, dude. Ugh, what is oh, he doing? Just, I never know what he's doing, ugh, dude. Disgusting <laughs> goal last night against the Avs. Little turnaround. Like, <laughs> short side tuck job right inside the goal line. What is his problem? I don't know, dude, but Trev is a beauty right now it's a fucking it's joke another one for him another one for my son adam fantilli yep. which we love tucky got two more yep. which we really appreciate he's really picking up some slack right now for yeah, the boys they need it and then we're very happy to welcome brady kachuk into the mixer here we don't get his goals all year we get his goals now mm-hmm. moving forward of which he grabbed one so we are up to an even 60 on the year, friends of the pod. 225 is the goal. We're going to figure out something sick if we hit it. So everybody Points fucking root for it. games for Brady. Little netters bump. Yep. We love to see it. You love to see that. Uh, let's get into what to watch this week, weekend, to close people out. What do you got? What do I got? I got Jets at Avs. Little central Great matchup. Great game. Two teams playing out of their mind. Kyle Connor's got a goal tonight. He is unbelievable. Avs are just dope. Took a tough loss. I mean, not tough loss because the Kings are a wagon, but you never like to lose, especially if you're a team like that. I just think it's going to be a great showdown. And then uh, I got a Saturday game that I think I might be stealing from you. Do you have multiple Saturday games? Yeah. Because I got multiple too. Do them. I love Knights at Stars. That's a showdown. showdown. Absolute showdown. Two of the best teams in the league. And then I like a little Met showdown here. Rags at Caps. Are the Caps a real deal? We'll find out. We'll find out. I think that's a fun one to watch. I like it. Both okay. Saturday games. Give me Thursday. Leafs at Ottawa. Always down for a little Battle of Ontario. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. And then Ducks at Chicago. Carlson Bedard. I knew you were going to pick that one. I love that game. I hope Leo's playing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Just load, load management. Load management. Bitch. Hey. What? Hey. Hey. It's they not his it. fault. And it's working well. <clears throat> well. They did it with Stammer. Well, he'd be, he'd be fine, dude. It's ridiculous. And then one more. Give me Friday. Wild at Oilers fired coaches battle. Oh, nice. That's got me excited right there. That's a coach bump battle. That's got me excited right there. That's really, really cool. All right. Those are some awesome games to watch. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and the Seth Jarvis interview. Dial into these games. Put on your Christmas sweaters because everything is coming up the holiday season right now. And you know what to do. Skate hard. Skate hard.